All right, guys, how you doing? All right, Bernard Martin, AKA Nara Too Hard, a WAM Promotions Digital Marketing Agency. All right, so guys, we're gonna get into it. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about ChatGPT for Google Ads. How to utilize ChatGPT for a Google Ads campaign. All right, so we already know Google Ads is a, a great platform for uh, businesses to get in front of their ideal customer. But there are some things with Google Ads that could be a, a bit uh, of a struggle. It could be a bit of time consuming and it could be just hard to come up with certain things, whether it's headlines or campaign strategies and objectives and things of that nature. And ChatGPT is just a great new platform that has came around. And, you know, ChatGPT can be utilized for a lot of different things. Well, today we're going to talk about how to utilize ChatGPT for Google Ads. All right. So without further ado, we're going to get straight to it. All right. So first and foremost, uh, how can you find Google Ads? How can you create an account? All right, so if I type in Google Ads in a search engine, first thing that pops up is Google Ads. All right, and then pretty much from here, all you go to do is gonna hit the Start Now button. All right, but uh, since I already have an account, uh, I'm gonna, just gonna hit the Sign In button. All right, so uh, that's the end of this module. So at the start of the module, we're gonna, we're going to show you exactly what it looks like when you're signed in. All right, whether you start now creating an account, you sign in, it's going to it's going to look exactly how it's going to look at the end of that. All right. All right, guys, see you at the end. Gone. All right, guys. All right, so we're back to it. All right, so at this point, you guys probably already created your Google Ads account. And after you created your account, it's going to look something like this. All right, as soon as you get on the other side of just putting in your personal information, here we are. All right, so this is a, a you know, this account right here, this is pretty much like an older account. Uh, we're just gonna kind of use this to play on. Um, this is an account that uh, we use for uh, one of our moving companies that we have. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to get into it, guys. So we're going to show you how to create Google ad campaigns utilizing ChatGPT. All right. So like I said, this is pretty much what your interface will look like. All right. Um, so the first thing that you do once you get here, you want to create a new campaign. You see on the front where this blue button right here says new campaign. All right, you can either go there or you can go on the left where it says campaigns and you can click there. And then you can click this blue button right here as well. All right, so let me see, let me, I want you guys to see a fresh campaign. So we'll refresh this. All right, so this is what your account will look like when there are no campaigns all right so hide that hide that all right so we're gonna hit the plus button all right after you hit the plus button you're gonna hit new campaign all right here we are all right so the first thing is what is your campaign objective all right so as we see, there are a lot of different objectives, but what if you do not know what objective to use for your company, right? You may not know what objective to use for your business, okay? So without further ado, let's get Chat, G Chat GPT involved. All right, so it's all about the type of questions that you ask Chat GPT, all right? so. What is the best campaign objective? What is the best 
campaign objective to use for a Google Ads campaign for a moving company. All right, so guys, um, we're gonna use a moving company for an example. Uh, that, that's the business we're gonna kind of utilize in this example, so I can kind of give you guys the best, uh, you know, the best example, all right? Um, so what is the best campaign objective to use for a Google Ads campaign for a moving company? We're gonna hit that, in, that enter button and see what we come up with. All right, so the best campaign objective. However, in general, the following objectives can be an effective for a moving company. So first it said the best campaign objectives to use for a Google Ads campaign for a moving company would depend on the specific goals, which is correct. So the objectives that they gave us was lead generation, website traffic, and conversions, right? So lead generation, if we're looking to generate leads, right? If we want somebody to fill out a form, right? We would do that. Website traffic, if we're trying to drive traffic to a website, all right, to increase its online presence. Or conversions, if we're looking to, you know, encourage potential customers to take a specific action, right? Such as requesting a quote or a booking a move, right? So technically we're trying to do all of these things. Right. So there's really no wrong one. But if you are new to Google Ads, this is a great way for you to really know which way and which direction to go. All right. So if we come over here, what options we have? We have sales. Right. We have leads. We have website traffic. Right. Product brand consideration, brand awareness and reach app promotion local store visits and promotion create a campaign without a goal guidance all right so technically you know we can use a, a few different ones we can do sales we can do leads we can do website traffic all right so technically any business wants to drive sales right so that's kind of like the first one that anyone will want to choose all right so we'll choose we'll use sales all right and sales is very similar to conversions all right. I know it doesn't say the word conversion, uh, but sales is pretty much a conversion. So we hit sales. All right. And these are the conversion goals to improve your sales. So these are pretty much conversions that pretty much was already kind of set up. Uh, we'll kind of get into conversion setups in a, in a next video. Uh, but for now, we'll kind of move past that. All right. So type of campaign, select the campaign type. All right. So what is the best type of campaign for conversion? All right. So technically, right, just like Chat GPT said, it depends on our goal. All right. So uh, when it comes to moving services, most customers or potential customers, they go on Google, the, the Google search and they type in moving services, moving companies, things of that nature. So technically, we will want to show up in the search section all right so that's the one we're going to choose all right select the ways you would like to reach your goals of course we want website visits of course we want phone calls of course we want store visits all right so we're going to type in our moving company website go ahead and pull it up right here copy and paste that all right the phone number all right, I'm gonna hit it's the phone number. All right, campaign, we'll just type in test. All right, so bidding what do you want to focus on right 
we got conversions we got conversion value right we got clicks and we got impressions all right so this question this question just depends on once again our goal right so when it whenever it comes to sales right whenever it comes to sales of course you can either do conversions which is the best or you can do clicks or you can do impression shares you know conversions is pretty much the amount of times that that actual action is being completed on your website and then we have clicks the amount of times that people are clicking on your ad impressions the amount of times that people are actually not technically seeing the ad but the amount of times the ad is being shown all right but we'll just click on conversions all right all right so location so location it technically depends on where you are located right technically depends on where you're located all right so for technically for me uh our moving company one of our locations that we're going to use the example for is in florida all right is actually in destin florida covers the whole okaloosa county area all right so just for an example i'm just going to type in the city destin that's the Florida. All right. Boom. So that's the location we're going to focus on. All right. So kind of go back up to the top. So it's giving us the options for networks. All right. So now it says all networks recommended. All right. So it, it includes all Google search partners, includes all Google display network partners and things of that nature. It kind of tells you what that means here. Now, um, I technically sometimes don't like to run it all on networks. Uh, sometimes I like to choose the networks because basically what I particularly wanted to do is I want the ad to run specifically on Google. Now, when you select the Google search partners and the Google display networks, you're allowing Google to place your ad on other people's websites, right? So technically when people are people that have an AdSense account. So if you ever went on Google, uh, on someone's website, you're scrolling on their website and then on that website, you see ads on a website. That is a Google partner. Why, how are they a Google partner? Because they have an AdSense account. So basically they are allowing Google to place ads on their website, right? So technically, that could be a good thing if Google is doing the right thing in placing your ad on a website that makes sense for your campaign. But if that's not the case, then that could waste your budget. Right now, display display uh, networks and Google search partners, they do work. That's why it's saying that your conversions can be increased by 8%. But sometimes, and this is just my opinion, sometimes I feel like Google is trying to spend your money the best they can <laughs> right so this is optional but i'm just going to select no all right so we got our location all right language we're just going to kind of keep it english all right so on to the good stuff artists audience segments all right so what audience segment do i choose some, you know, what if you don't know what that means, right? So basically an audience segment is pretty much, you know, you choosing the type of people that you want your ad to be in front of. So this is a, also another good option to get ChatGPT in, involved, all right? So what audience segments are best for a Google Ads campaign for a moving company all right so there are several audience segments that can be effective for a google ads campaign for a moving company here are some examples all right so we got in market audiences custom intent audiences demographic targeting right remarketing audiences similar audiences 
All right. So technically right here for audience segments. All right. There are different there are different types. Right. So audience segments, they have in market audiences. So we're just going to kind of focus on the in market one. All right. So in market audiences are users that have demonstrated an active interest interest in moving services. This audience segment is created based on user behaviors such as searches, clicks, website visits. Right. So. Let's get more in depth. What are the best in market audiences for a Google ads campaign for a moving company? Wow. So this is pretty much giving us the words, the phrases that we should choose for our company moving home services all right so let's copy and paste and let's see what pops up all right so let's see home services so basically it's telling us these are some good options inside of these are some good options to choose within the home service and in market section. All right. So it doesn't actually show us the word home service, but it's showing us that this particular category is great for moving companies. Right. So inside of here, I can choose home improvement. All right. Some of these might not technically be very close to what I need. General contracting and remodeling services. That could be a particular one. All right, what else? Real estate. Let's try real estate. Boom, real estate shows up. And then what else shows up? We got residential properties, houses, residential properties for sale, new houses. These are some awesome great ones because anybody that's searching for apartments, new apartments, new houses, guess what? They're looking to move, all right? So this is even for rent, for sale or for rent. So vacation, well, no, nah, not vacation. You know, you normally don't need a, uh, you know, if you're going on vacation, you normally want to hire a moving company. So these are some great options. What else? Home improvement, we got that one already. Apartment and rental properties, self-storage. Self-storage, that's definitely one. Let's see if that pops up. Let's see. So looks like it is not popping up. Let's just try storage. All right, so nothing. Oh, home storage and shelving. Yep. So, oh, moving and relocation. That'll be a good one. All right, so technically, guys, homeowners. Now, this is a demographic section, right? Now, remember up here was telling us about demographic targeting, right? So, but this is definitely a great start, guys. Like, look at all the great uh, audience segments we was able to add to our campaign. So, this is great for someone that doesn't really understand their industry. But even if you understand the industry, getting insight from a machine like ChatGPT is magnificent. All right. So, this is a great method, guys. Great method. All right. So, we'll kind of go from there. But I just really wanted to kind of give you guys some great insight. So you guys know the best direction to choose from. Uh, more settings, let's see. I really don't mess with this section right here. We'll kind of leave that alone. We'll leave this as is and we'll go to the next. All right, guys, so uh, this ends this module. All right, so the next module, as you see, we will be getting into keywords. All right, till next time. All right, guys, we're back at it. All right, so we're gonna continue throughout this campaign. All right, so now we are now 
in the ad group section. All right, we were in the campaign section. Now we're in the ad group section and inside of the ad group section is when we start focusing on targeting. All right, so one of the targeting and main target settings for a sales campaign inside of an ad group is the keywords, right? So keywords is the foundation of the campaign because when people are typing in particular type of keywords, well, guess what? This is how your ad shows up, all right? So, so let's get started. So inside of here, Google has already generated some keywords, right? But we're gonna start from scratch, all right? Because Google doesn't do this for every industry. All right, they do. They don't do this for every industry, and sometimes they don't do it at all. But Google has been getting better as far as generating keywords for you. Now, I want to show you how to generate keywords if they don't provide you with keywords, or let's say you're dealing with an industry that Google isn't very familiar with and isn't giving great information that you feel like is good. Well, hey. Let's go to chat GPT. All right, so let's ask chat GPT, what are some good keywords? Provide me with the best set of keywords for a Google ads search campaign for a moving company <clears throat> all right so Now, if you notice, these are the Google, these are the keywords that Google. I just uh, controlled uh, Command Z. <laughs> these are the ones I deleted a second ago, but I want you to see the difference. <clears throat> All right, so these are the words that Google uh, pretty much generated for us, right? So over here, these are the keywords that ChatGPT generated for us. Now, there are some similarities, but this is a little bit more in depth, all right? So for example, they broke it down in sections, moving service keywords, right? So these are all the moving service keywords, right? So a couple similarities, all right? Not, not a lot, it's a couple, a couple similarities, but not really. Right now, then it gets in depth geographic location keywords. All right, so this is where it's important, right? Because <clears throat> let's just say, well, not let's just say, based on the campaign that I generated, mine is location based. All right, remember the location that I selected was Destin, Florida. All right, so what it's telling me is since I'm in a geographic location, moving companies in blank city. So I should put the word Destin because people in Destin are going to search what? Moving companies in Destin. Another one, cities movers, blank movers, Destin movers. Moving companies near me. The word near me is so vital, right? You would be surprised how I many people search the word near me. Moving companies in state, moving companies in Florida, state moving companies, right? Cross country movers, coast to coast movers. It's vital that you try to get more specific to the searcher as possible because I promise you, if you are doing location based uh, advertisement, the person, the potential client will be more 
they they will they will click on a ad that says the location versus just the you know just a moving company. So it, let's say uh, an ad says uh, moving company, right? And then it's an ad that says moving company in Florida. Well, you're going to choose the one that is in your state versus the one that says no state, right? So that type of ad gets a higher particular click. Then we have specialty move service keywords, right? Because, okay, all moving companies move household goods. But then also, let's just say you want to be a niche moving company, or if you're trying to target particular type of uh, customers, right? Piano movers, fine art movies, movers, antique movers, senior moving services, military moving services. There are companies that particular service, there, there are companies that do some of these and only these, right? There are, there are companies that specialize in military moves. There are people that only do piano moves, all right? So this is a great one. And then general moving related keywords. So these are, you know, depending on, let's say, the type of marketing you're doing. So, for example, let's say if you type in moving tips, right? If I'm a company that is trying to maximize my SEO, then if someone types in this keyword, I'm going to make sure that I can provide as much information as possible around this keyword, right? So this is a perfect, perfect type of keyword to really maximize on uh, for SEO purposes and for ads as well. All right. So this is definitely uh, some great information, guys. Great information. So just for this particular ad or this particular course, I'm going to use these keywords that they just generated. All right. And then also I'm going to grab these. All right, then I'm gonna add the word Destin. Oh, it says state, so I need to put Florida. Boom. All right, so we're gonna go with those. All right. And here we are. So these are pretty much the keyword section, guys. So uh, without further ado, that wraps up this module. And guess what? We are going to go on the next one, guys. See you on the next one. Gone. All right, guys. Back to it. All right. So in this module, we're going to get into the actual ad. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna get into the actual ad. All right, so pretty much from here, the ad is actually what you see. And if you look down here, this is actually an example of an ad. Uh, they're giving us examples. Uh, based on the keywords that actually generated auto responses, we're gonna delete these uh, because even though they did a good job and you know they're generating auto responses, the thing about it is those auto responses are going to be very similar to what your competition. Guess how many other moving companies are probably using Google's auto responses. All right. So <clears throat> we don't want to do what everyone else is doing. All right. So um, pretty much from here, it already has the URL, uh, which is our moving company website in here. Uh, display path, uh, you pretty much just put what you want. Uh, since we're doing a geolocation-based uh, ad, we want to make it as close as to the city as possible. So we're going to put the city name in this one. And in this one, we're going to put Okaloosa, which is the name of the county. Like I said, there's no wrong, right or wrong way to do this. All right, actually, we'll put the area code, which is 850. <clears throat> All right, so next thing's next thing. Let's see, add a phone number. So we're going to add the moving company phone number. Let's see. All right, a 
apply. All right, so we got the phone number added. All right, the fun part, guys, the headlines. All right, so it's time to get Chat GPT back to work. So, <clears throat> create 15 unique. can spell unique and creative creative headlines for a Google ads search campaign for a moving company <clears throat> all right create me 15 unique and creative headlines for a google ads search campaign for a moving company let's see what they got <clears throat> all right so as you can see you can probably see these are very has nowhere near the type of headlines that Google provided us. Nowhere near. These are very, very different. All right. All right. So, all right. So, they're a little bit long. So, it's okay. Let us handle that. A little too long. Let's see if they are like that. Huh. <clears throat> so this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask it to generate the same thing. Under 30 characters. Boom. Okay, chat GPT. All right. You see how I did that for us, guys? Can't beat it. Copying all of these cool headlines. See how Chat GPT just makes everything easy. So I'm just going to use boom. All right. All right. So descriptions, these are auto generated. So, of course, we're not going to use them. All right, so instead of headlines, now we're going to tell us tell it to do the same thing, but for descriptions. So let's see. We'll just tell it to do five under 90 characters. Let's see what we got. Boom. As you see, very different. <clears throat> All right, let's add our descriptions. Boom. There we are. There we are. Right. So we got our got our descriptions and we got our headlines, guys. 
All right, got a description and got our headlines. All right, you see how magnificent that is, All right? So that does it for this campaign, guys, or this section of the campaign. All right, till then, see you on the next one. All right, guys, so we're back at it, <clears throat> back at it. All right, so we just got done with the description. So now we're kind of moving through with the next sections. All right, so we're going to kind of start with the site links. All right, so site links are pretty much, you know, adding an uh, easy way to explain it is adding extra space on your ad. The more, the more site links you have, the more space your ad is taken up, the more advertising space you're taking up, the more probability that you, or the more potential chance that you have for your ad being seen and also being clicked, right? So if you look on the right, these are pretty much examples of, you know, what your site links will look like, right? You see description one, description two, that's where your site links will go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some more site links, all right? So what we're gonna do, you guessed it, chat GPT, take us away. So come up with, we're gonna tell them to create us some awesome site links. Let's see, site link text. Site link text under twenty five characters ah, free quote. <laughs> All right, free quote it is. All right, description, write us two descriptions, All right? Create us two, create us two unique in descriptions. For a site link. under 35 characters boom boom book your move today and it said get free quote now so we're going to ask it to do it again because we already kind of said something about a quote. Boom. Grab one of these. So that's a good way to do it, guys. Like if it generates you like something you already said, just ask it to do it again. All right. So I'm going to go back on my website and a site link. You got to you got to have multiple pages. Uh, on the website for you to truly generate a good site link because basically you're taking them to different sites on your website. So the more sites you can give them, the better. All right. So that's pretty much our first site link. All right. Now I'm just gonna do the. I'm just gonna do one. You know, just so you can kind of get the get the drift, get the you know get as far as what we're doing here. All right, but we can do as many as up to four. All right, I'm gonna save that. We're gonna apply that. And then boom, we got our site link. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is gonna go to the call out section. All right, we're gonna create new call out. All right, so, <clears throat> You guessed it, we're back to ChatGPT. So we're gonna tell ChatGPT to create us some call outs. <clears throat> so once again, call outs are pretty much you taking up 
real estate space, digital real estate. The more space you can take up, the better, guys, for your campaigns. All right. We're going to tell, create. How many call outs we got? We got four sections, create four unique creative campaign level call outs under 25 characters. Boom. Excellent. Trusted by thousands. License and insured. Of course, you got to be licensed and insured to be a moving company. No hidden fees. 24-7 customer service. All right. And as you see on the right, you see all these things are changing. All right. So this is the call out section. All right. You see how it's taking up more space. All right. But boom. Apply now. And there we are. There we are. We got our call out section. All right. So that pretty much does it, guys. Now, of course, uh, you know, we can uh, add images, but the goal here is to show you how to use Chat GPT for your ad. Uh, so, you know, we'll kind of skip the image section, but, you know, of course, adding images is going to help. If you look on the right, it's going to tell you things that you can do to strengthen up your campaign, all right? Add more site links, of course. You know, you want to add at least four, uh, but I just did one to show you an example. Um, you know, as far as this, I don't really mess with the asset types too much, depending on the type of campaign. Um, add URL options, you know, you can kind of get in depth with this. This is something that we don't really truly mess with. Um, this is a little bit more complex. Um, but yeah, so from there, we're going to hit done. And then boom, we have our ad. All right, we got our ad. And then we're going to go to next. All right. So there it is, guys. That will complete this section. All right. See you on the next. Gone. All right, guys, we're back to it. All right. So pretty much in this module, guys, we're going to kind of get into the next section. And that is the budget. All right. What is a good budget to set for your Google Ads campaign? So make sure that it runs efficiently. Now, Although Google, Google Ad does, you know, most of the time give you some great recommendations because it is their platform, but sometimes you want to double check. All right. Make sure you have your lawyers checking the lawyers, right? Make sure you got your CPA checking your CPA, your assistant checking your assistant, right? Because at the, at the same time, uh, Google Ads is a business for profit. All right. So they're going to want you to spend the most money, but at the same time, they want you to make a return on investment at the same time. So what is a great average daily budget? So it's recommending one hundred and five dollars. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go to chat GPT and just double check. What does chat GPT have to say? So I actually already had the question in there. What is a good daily budget for a conversion Google ads campaign for a moving company in Destin, Florida? All right. So now it says determining a good daily budget for a conversion Google ads campaign. It depends on several factors such as competition, target audience and the cost per click for the selective keywords. That's correct. So as a general guideline, it is recommended to start with a daily budget of at least $50 to $100 for a conversion focused campaign for a moving company in Destin, Florida. This should provide a good starting point for generating traffic and leads. However, it is important to regularly monitor the campaign performance and adjust the budget accordingly to maximize, to maximize 
ROI. So this is saying at least 50 to $100. This is saying $100, right? Now, does ChatGPT fully know? Because it is said based on competition, target audience, and cost per click, right? Now, this is some great information that for someone that is not familiar with the industry, okay? If you're not familiar with the industry, this is definitely something to go off of, right? So for us, we're going to just go with the average daily budget that they recommended, all right? Since ChatGPT isn't too far off, it's saying anywhere from 50 to 100, they're recommending 105, we'll just kind of go with that. And then they're kind of giving us an estimation of, okay, well, weekly costs, it could be $735, average cost per click, $30, right? So it's pretty, you know, some decent information. Hit that next button. And then from here, it's kind of going through checking our campaign, right? Let's see, checking our campaign. So it's saying our ad has issues. Let's see. Let's see. Now I know our billing had this is an old account, so of course we have to fix the, the payment option. So uh but let's see. It is saying we need to fix the ad. Let's see. It says punctuation and symbols. Let's see. What do we need to fix? Contains move. Remove any non-standard or repetitive punctuations or symbols. So looks like we have a, a the move and then exclamation mark. So Google is funny about, you know, a lot of different symbols. So a lot of times when I get those, I just, you know, delete it. I think that was the only one. So we'll kind of go from there, let's see. So the only error should be the billing error. There we go, that is correct. All right. So it published our campaign. All right. So we already know, you know, it's the payment method, but this ad is good. So now after you create the ad, the next thing is you see it's going to be in policy review. All right. It's going to take one to two days for them to approve the ad. All right, we don't want this ad to run. We don't want to spend a hundred dollars a day for an ad that we're not really running. It was just for an example. All right, but this is our ad right here. All right. So there we are, guys. This is how you create a ad utilizing Chat GPT, and this can go for any industry, guys. Any indie industry, any industry that you're in you can utilize this. All right. Until next time, gone. Congratulations, guys, you made it. All right. So without further ado, chat GPT for Instagram marketing, right? Chat GPT is a software that has taken the world by storm. And it's so many unique and creative ways that you can utilize chat gpt and here today we're going to show you how to utilize it for instagram marketing how can you use it to take your instagram marketing to new heights and new levels all right so without further ado let's get started so first and foremost we're going to talk about the foundational stages right before we can get into advertising on Instagram, we're gonna talk about the basics, right? We're going to show you how to maximize your content posting with ChatGPT, right? So 
When it comes to posting the content, there's a couple different variables that play a very key role when posting. All right. And I'm going to show you how you can help yourself with two of those variables utilizing chat GPT. So the first one, when you're designing your post, one of the very, very first things that a lot of people need help with is the headline, right? The content, the copywriting. That's probably one of the, I wouldn't say the most difficult things, but one of the time consuming things. And guess what? Chat GPT can help you out. So it's all about what you are asking chat GPT. It's all about asking the right questions, right? So we're going to tell chat GPT to complete a task. Hey, hey, create me five headlines for a Instagram post about posting my new car. So I told it to create me five headlines for an Instagram post about posting my new car. So peep this, guys. Vibing up my social media game with my brand new ride emojis. Hashtag. <laughs> it created me five very unique posts. Right? Five very unique headline posts for Instagram. Right. So within seconds, not only did it create me one, I created five, because what if I didn't like one of them? I got five to choose from. And to be quite honest, all of these are pretty, pretty cool, pretty nice. So, guys, just imagine how much time you're saving with this alone. Right. So. That's the first one, y'all. How to utilize chat TPT to create your headlines. All right, guys. So the next thing that you definitely want to utilize chat GPT for after you create your content, you created your headlines, right? Well, in this example, it gave you a couple hashtags, right? But if anybody knows Instagram, one hashtag isn't enough. But guess what? No worries, because ChatGPT is going to save the day. So we're going to continue to use this post as an example. So posting my new car. So we're going to tell chat GPT to help us generate hashtags that's related to the post. Hey, create me 10. We'll just say a list, create me a list of hashtags for a Instagram post. That is about posting my new car. And before our very eyes, it creates us a list of hashtags. So we don't have to go do the research. We don't have to spend hours and hours trying to make sure that we're using the best hashtags to reach the maximum amount of people on Instagram. We can go to ChatGPT, 
tell it to complete the task and it will complete it within seconds, right? So these are the two very key things that you definitely want to use chat GPT for, right? Now, I'm going to show you another way to utilize it, all right? Here's another way to utilize chat GPT. So this information, most of the time, you want to check your Instagram analytics, right? But this particular method is more for people that don't have any analytics to go off of, right? And this is pretty much when is the best time to post, right? If you're new to Instagram, you might not know when is the best time to post. Most of the time you want to post when most of your followers are online, when they're most active. And everybody group of followers are always different. But rain, hail, sleet, snow, there is always a certain time that majority of people are active, right? So let's ask chat GPT. What are the best times to post on Instagram? Right, and voila, within seconds, it gives us a whole dialogue about how and when and why, right? Now, of course, it said one of the key things that we just discussed, the best times to post on Instagram depend on several factors, including your target audience's location and time zone, as well as their daily routines and social media habits. But however, here are some general guidelines to go off of, because like I said, what if you don't have a audience, right? Well, you have to build one some kind of way. So the best way to do it is use the general guidelines, right? So what does it say? Weekdays, weekdays tend to have higher engagement rates than weekends. That's important. So with that tool alone, I will only post Monday through Friday. If I don't have an audience and don't know my audience, I'm going to post Monday through Friday. The best times to post on weekdays are typically during off work hours, such as early in the morning, six to seven, lunchtime, 11 to one, and then late evening, seven to nine. There you go. You can post three times a day during those times. Avoid posting during typical work hours, such as nine to five. Depending on your target audience, you may find that posting on weekends or during off work hours, such as early mornings or late nights, can also be effective. So this is something that's going to help you. Once you get an audience, you can start diving into the analytics and then you'll be able to really zero in on your audience. But right now, if you don't have an audience, this is a great tool to use. All right. All right, guys. See you on the next one. All right, guys, back to it. So pretty much, you know, we started off by showing you guys how to utilize chat GPT for Instagram when it comes to the content side, right? Now, when it comes to Instagram, there are some very key ways, but some very only key ways that you can literally grow on Instagram, right? So one of those ways are, of course, posting, right? Posting content, posting very engaging content, uh, following, liking, commenting, DMing, all of those different actions in a unique way, right? And of course, following Instagram's guidelines while doing that because you can only do so many actions in a specific time frame. So that's pretty much the very first way to do it. The next 
and purest way to grow on Instagram is Instagram ads. Once you understand the social media business model, then you can understand next how to operate within that and maximize. So when it comes to social media, their business model is a very high percentage of their revenue comes from ads, right? Because if you think about it, you can do anything and everything that you want to do on Instagram for free. You can post for free. You can like, comment, talk to other individuals for free. But if you notice, whenever you post that content, no matter how many hashtags you're using, no matter how many, you know, um, you know, no matter what time of day you're posting, no matter how good the content is, no matter how many followers you got, you are going to only reach a certain amount of people. You have no control over that action. Well, you actually do. Because when you run Instagram ads now and only then when your content is able and eligible to reach the masses with the Instagram ad platform, you now can reach millions and billions of people. Right. So with that being said, here we are. The platform that we are on is the Facebook business ad manager. All right. So if you're new to Facebook ads manager, I, I definitely suggest that you get familiar and we're going to help you get familiar here. Uh, what we're looking at is if you have an account, and you log in or if you don't have a Facebook as manager account. Once you create your account, which is super simple, guys, uh, if you look in inside of the URL business.facebook.com slash ad manager. All right. You go to that link. That is where you're able to create your ads manager account. All right. And after you create it, this is where you will end up. All right. This is the interface of the ads manager. All right. So what we're looking at is we're inside of our manager account and we manage multiple, multiple dozens of businesses, entrepreneur accounts, you know, artists, you name it. Now, this campaign in this business, Wham Studios. All right. So I actually have uh, equity inside of this company. It's a recording studio business in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. All right. Uh, fantastic business. All right. And we're going to use this ad account for an example. All right. So without further ado, if you look at the top, you notice there's a green button that says create. Right. So if I hit that green button, it pulls me up a list of options. All right. So at the bottom, it says choose your campaign objective. So as a recording studio business, of course, the goal. Well, the goal could mean anything. It could be anything. It really depends on the goal. But the end goal of every business is to make money right but it also depends on the stage of the business if it's a brand new business not fully ready for business but they want to start getting the brand out there then the initial goal might not be to make money because you can't make money but it's very important for you to have people aware of the business so we got brand awareness right other than that, everything else almost falls under the category of sales. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to act like we don't know which option to choose. What if I'm brand new to Facebook ads, right? And if you don't know, Facebook ads is what you use to run Instagram ads. So you have to have a Facebook ads manager to run Instagram ads. No Facebook ads manager, no Instagram ads. 
even though it's called Facebook ads, Instagram is a part of Facebook, just for the people that didn't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to act like we don't know what option to choose, and we're going to ask ChatGPT. Which campaign objective is best for a recording studio business? Which campaign objective is best for a recording studio business for a Instagram ad? campaign so when creating an instagram ad campaign for a recording studio business the choice of campaign objectives will depend on a specific goal of the campaign here are a few, few positive objectives and how they can benefit a recording studio business right so just like we said before, it really truly depends on the goal. But what's amazing about this is it breaks down the ones that make most sense for the business. And also it tells you the reason why, you know, why would you use this particular objective over another one? Right. So, for example, brand awareness, if the goal is to increase brand awareness for the recording studio, then the brand awareness objective is a good choice. This objective will help get the recording studio's name and logo in front of more people on Instagram, which can help to build recognition and familiarity with the brand. Right. Then it talks about reach, talks about the traffic, talks about conversions. Right. It talks about each objective as far as which one could be better or worse for the brand. But technically, it's, it's really the terms on the goal, right? Now, of course, brand awareness is the level one. Conversions is the highest level of them all uh, when it comes to uh, driving traffic, right? But this is how you would utilize ChatGPT when it comes to starting your Instagram ad campaign. So with this being said, which objective do we want to use, right? Traffic. If the recording studio wants to drive more traffic to the website or landing page, then the traffic objective can be used. This objective will optimize the ad delivery to drive more clicks to the designated URL. Conversions, if the recording studio wants to drive specific actions such as a booking, as such as booking a recording studio session or purchasing a product or service, then a conversions objective can be used. This objective will optimize the ad delivery to drive specific actions on the website, such as completing a booking or making a purchase. All right. And you know, we might as well just read the reach one. Reach, if the recorded studio wants to reach as many people as possible with their ad, then the reach objective can be used. This objective optimizes the ad delivery to the maximize the number of unique users to see the ad, right? So I'm just gonna use reach uh, just for this particular example, All right? All right, so guys, I want you to notice. So under awareness, uh, if you look down, it says reach. All right, it doesn't say reach in the campaign objective itself. If you look under awareness, it says good for reach, brand awareness, video views, store location awareness. So that's why we're clicking on awareness. Hit continue, and here we are, we're off on the races. All right, guys, so we are inside of our brand new reach campaign. All right, so I'm going to rename it as a test and then put reach campaign, right? So special ads category, right? 
This is not a special ad category, doesn't fall under that category. So we're gonna pretty much pass that. All right, campaign details, right? Campaign objective, really everything on this front page, uh, as far as uh, you know what we're doing, we don't really need to mess with it. We're not doing anything fully technical with this particular type of ad, uh, but you know you do have a lot of different options. Uh, the A, the A B testing. If you're you know plan on testing different audiences, uh, you want to test different landing pages, different types of people, then the A B test would definitely be great. All right. And then, of course, you got the Advantage Campaign Plus It's what it's pretty a new feature, uh, not brand new, but it is something that's kind of fairly new. Um, basically, they're saying they're to dis distribute your budget across ad sets to get more results, depending on the delivery optimization. All right. So it'll pretty much spread your budget pretty good across different ad sets, depending on how many ad sets you have inside of the campaign. All right, so next we are on the re the uh, the ad set. Sorry, going to rename that test. We're going to put reach ad set. All right, so it says choose the Facebook page you want to promote. All right, I know we're doing an Instagram ad, but uh you know it is making us choose a facebook page but we're going to deselect the facebook option when we are promoting and we'll get to that point here pretty soon all right so daily budget daily budget definitely depends on you guys uh so what i can do is give you guys a recommendation when it comes to daily budget it truly depends on a lot of different variables uh, location being one of the biggest ones, right? And then also your campaign objective being the second biggest one. So whenever you're doing awareness campaigns, well, you can spend as little as $5 a day, right? But also you are only gonna be able to cover not as much of territory when it comes to location. Now, it's going to give you the option to cover the whole world, whole United States, but just imagine how thin you're spreading that $5 a day versus if you focus on a particular area. So for the recording studio, we're providing a service that someone actually has to come into a brick and mortar location to receive. So it definitely makes sense for us to target location. All right, so a five dollar a day budget is OK. All right. So we're going to stick with that. All right. So another key factor. So if you notice, the time says 4.55 p.m. All right. So I'm going to give you some great advice. So whenever you're running your ad and you're building your campaigns and you're doing it this late in the day, Always set your start date for the next day. And also you want to put it starting at the very beginning second. Right. Reason why is if your ad gets approved before the day is up, let's say your ad gets approved at 10 p.m. and you set your budget for five dollars. The ad manager is going to maximize your budget. It's going to make sure you spend that $5 before the day is over because you set your daily budget at $5. All right. So that's very important to definitely understand. All right. So that's very key. All right. So next you have your audience. All right. So when it comes to your audience, this is very important. All right. So we're going to deselect the United States. All right, so we're in Atlanta, Georgia, so we're going to choose Atlanta. All right. We're going to choose the city as far as the radius. We're going to leave it as is. Right. And if you notice on the right hand side, it, it pretty much shows the estimate audience size. Right. And then also at the top, it says it gives you the choice to choose between people that are living 
in or recently lived in this location. And then you can choose people that only live in a location and people that recently lived in a location and also people that are traveling in this location. All right. So we're just going to leave it as is people that are living or are recently in this location. Right now, the next thing that we're going to do is the detailed targeting. Now, this is when chat GPT is going to be able to come into play, because when it comes to detailed targeting, what if you don't know your audience? What if you don't know your type of customer? Well, you can utilize chat GPT to help you determine that, right? So what and first before we ask it i want you to see if we edit this right it gives you the option to choose demographics interests or behaviors as far as targeting settings for the detailed target right so this pretty much allows you to target a certain group of people all right so we're going to ask chat gpt can it help what detailed target settings are best for a ad set that is for a recording studio business what what detailed targeted target settings are best for a ad set that is for recording studio business All right, here we are. So this is some great, great detailed information, guys. So I was just trying to figure out the detail targeting side and it actually gave me a little bit more information that's actually going to help us way more. So we already got the location part good, but the age and the gender, that is sauce. Basically, it's saying, depending on the type of recording studio services being offered, you may want to target a specific age range or gender. For example, if the recording studio primarily services to musicians in their 20s and 30s, you may want to get you may want to target users in that age range. So now this definitely falls under the category of you knowing your audience. All right. Once you start generating data you're going to know how to answer this question, right? So for now, we'll just leave it open until we start collecting data. Now, interest. Interest targeting can help you reach users who are likely to be interested in the recording studio services. For example, you can target users who have shown interest in music production software, audio engineer, music festivals, or specific music genres, right? So that's that's a great tool. So these are some keywords that we're gonna type in. Also it says behaviors. Behaviors targeting can help you reach users who have shown specific behaviors related to your target audience. For example, you can target users who have attended music events, purchased recorded studio equipment online, or engage with music related content on Instagram. All right, so that's some good, good information, guys. All right, so let's start with the interest. All right, so we're gonna audio engineering. Boom. So a lot of different audio engineering options have popped up. All right, so music production, audio engineering. All right. A lot of different ones, a lot of different ones. What else? Music festivals, music festivals. Let's, let's choose this one. Let's see what pops up. Boom, music festivals pops up. Now, one of the key things it said is or specific music genres. 
So we know that I know this, you know, Wham Studios caters to the hip hop industry. So let's see if I type in rapping what pops up. OK, boom. So rapping. So if you notice, there's two different rapping options. One is a job title. One is an interest. The interest has more people. You also always want to go over interest more if it is an option uh, versus anything else. All right. But they're all great options. But interest is stronger if interest is an option for that keyword. All right. What else says music production software? Let's see if that's an option. It's not production is and production is music. So we can use that. All right. So it says behaviors. Let's see. Let's see if we put this in, something will pop up. No. Now, after we start generating some terms, we can also hit the suggestions and certain things will start popping up, right? So we have a lot of different options that's popping up after we was able to give it some information to go off of, right? So it's a lot of different options that's popping up here, guys. A lot of different options. But we'll just leave it as that for now. But just so you can see the power of chat GPT when it comes to this section, all right? See you on the next one, guys. All right, guys. So pretty much we're going to save this audience, right? And we're just going to save it as test. It's just a test audience. All right. So now we're going to scroll past the optimization and the delivery. But we're going to hit more options, all right? We're going to hit more options. All right. Now, if you see, it shows you frequency cap. All right. On default is one impression every seven days. Right. So pretty much what it's stating is, is it is going to show one user, one impression every seven days. Now, you have the option to change this. All right. So. Recommendation. You could either leave it if you don't fully understand your audience. Now, one thing that we understand as marketers is sometimes people have to see it more than once. All right. So if they are seeing it only once every seven days, is that a good way to market to your customers? Right. So it truly depends. Now, we recommend having retargeting ads set up on top of using uh, the frequency cap, right? So it really depends on the goal. It depends on the budget. Uh, if you have a low budget, like as far as what we're doing on the test, $5 a day, that's pretty much a low budget. So we'll probably leave the frequency cap because we also want to spread our budget to more people and reach more people, right? So if we add up that frequency cap to two a day, then we're going to be spending more money per person. All right. So it's just you just got to really determine uh, how you want to go about it. All right. So now we're going to hit next. All right, guys, so very, very important. So here under the audience section, we want to go to the placement section. So this is where you can control where your ads are being shown. And since we're running only Instagram, we definitely want to take it off to the recommended and go to manual placements. All right. So this is where you can choose to only market to Instagram. Now, of course, you do have the option to market it on Facebook as well. Now, something that is very important to understand the more that you manually control your placements, the higher your ad costs can go. Whenever you allow Facebook to control where your ads are going, research shows that your cost per click, cost per view, cost per impression, however your uh, campaign objective is set up will be lower. All right, so just keep that in mind. 
But uh, what I, you know, with that being said, now we're set up for the Instagram marketing. All right. So it is only showing on Instagram. So you see, there's only two options selected: the feeds, the stories, the reels. So on a feed, we want to click down, make sure, because we can control it even more if we want. All right. So we see the Instagram option isn't available for awareness campaign, which is okay. But we're showing all on all the main places: the Instagram feed, the Instagram profile feed, Instagram Explorer page, and the Instagram Home Explorer section. All right, and also we're showing up on the stories and real sections as well. All right, so all the important places for Instagram. And pretty much that's it. Y'all gonna hit that next button. And now we're in the ad section. All right, now we're in the ad section. So we're gonna title this test reach ad all right so we got our facebook page and our instagram page for the wham studios already selected right so here we are we have our option to do a few different things and our ad set up we can create a new ad or we can use an existing post but in this case we're going to create an ad so we can utilize the power of chat gpt right all right so already it already has uh pretty much some media and some images and some creatives for us to use already so that's pretty cool um if it didn't i would just have to go here and uh edit my media and i can actually choose the type of images or videos that i want to use but we're just going to use the ones that they're selected for us which is the logo all right so primary text what do i say right well you already know we can ask chat gpt create five primary text for a recording studio awareness ad and there we go guys we got five different primary texts all right so i'm gonna copy the first one right and notice it gives me five options so we actually want to add all five that's why i said five and the reason why is the more information that we give facebook ads manager the more they have to test so what they're going to do is they're going to rotate these five primary texts right they're going to rotate them around all right and when they rotate them around they're going to notice that some of them are getting better traction than the others and whatever one is getting the best traction they're going to use that all right so that's why we want to use all five so there we go so boom and there we are just like that we got our primary text set up all right and we are ready to go all right so if we had a sales campaign conversion campaign you know it'll also give us the option to add the destination which is a website to send the traffic to the website all right but in this case you know we're doing just an awareness reach campaign all right and that's pretty much it guys that is it and from there we'll hit publish We'll publish our campaign and just like that we was able to cut down so much time on creating an ad because chat gpt was here to help us along the way
All right. So guys, just like that, just like that. Now you see it's processing. And here we are. We are off to the races with our brand new ad created by ChatGPT. What's up, guys? You made it. Welcome to the Chat GPT for TikTok marketing course. All right. So, guys, we're going to show you all the cool ways that you can utilize Chat GPT to help you out on your marketing tasks related to TikTok. Right. So, without further ado, let's get to work. All right. So, um, one of the very first things when it comes to marketing, we got to start from the foundational aspects, right? So when we think of TikTok, first, we have to understand what is TikTok, right? So TikTok is a social media platform, right? So now, what is a social media platform? But more importantly, what is the business model? Once we understand the business model of a social media platform, now we can really understand how to attack it and maximize our efforts. So a social media platform is where pe people can gather, right, and be social. But instead of it being in person, you're able to do it on a online platform. And there's a lot of different ways that you can communicate and talk to different individuals, follow different individuals, follow people's stories, lifestyles, etc. The business model. If you are a consumer, you know, one of the first things you may think of is, well, how do they make money if I can create an account for free? Right. I can uh, post for free. I can like, follow, comment, etc. I can do a lot, a lot of different tasks for free, right? Well, did you know 85 to 90% of their revenue comes from advertisement, right? So 85 to 90% of social media, TikTok in general, their revenue comes from ads. So that is ads that comes from business owners, entrepreneurs, brands, music artists, etc. Right? That is where the bulk of the money comes from. So if you notice, whenever a, a social media platform is first created, they are not running ads, right? Because they're trying to incentivize everyone to come to the platform for free. Another thing that you notice is your engagement rates, your visibility is way, way increased. Why? Because they're trying to incentivize you to, hey, you're not getting any visibility on Instagram or Facebook. We're giving way more visibility. Come over here. They're allowing you to reach more people, right? To incentivize you. Once they get a certain amount of people to the platform, your visibility goes down and then they start running ads on the platform because if they hit over a billion people on a platform, they can now have a lot of different room and wiggle room and space to put ads in between content. Right. So that's why you see ads and that's how they make money. Now, what does that mean for a advertiser, a marketer, someone is trying to grow on TikTok. Well, now that you know that they incentivize advertisers, because once you run ads, you can reach the masses, right? Because you can do anything you want to do for free. You can post for free, right? You can post on so uh, TikTok for free. But no matter how many followers you got, no matter how many times you post, no matter how many hashtags you use, is only going to reach a certain amount of people. So how can you reach the, the majority of the other people that you haven't reached? Do you run ads? When you run ads, then you're going to notice that not only can you reach more people, but you can decide the type of people that you're able to reach. TikTok has so much different data that you're able to reach a certain type of person. All right, so it gets deep, guys. So. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a, you know, an understanding, you know, of 
this giant that we call social media and just the whole, you know, inside and, and the behind the scenes of the operations, you know, of just understanding how it works in the business model, right? All right, so guys, we've got to get to work. See you on the next one. All right, guys, let's get to it. So when it comes to the foundational aspects of social media, but TikTok, it starts with the content. It doesn't matter how many times we want to post. It doesn't matter how many followers we got or want. Or it doesn't matter our goals. Nothing matters until we figure out and master the content, right? So the content is everything. So, of course, uh, you figure out what type of content you want to post. First, of course, it starts with the brand. You know, what type of brand are you? You know, are you a business? Are you just a regular person, right? So what if you are trying to grow on TikTok and you don't know how to approach it? Like you don't have a business, you don't know what to do, right? So let's ask ChatGPT. What? are the best type of brands to start and launch on TikTok. And let's see what it generates for us. Right, so it's telling us lifestyle brands, beauty brands, food and beverage brands. So now as I'm seeing this, then I start thinking about the type of content that I see a lot on TikTok and this is a lot of it. I look at the videos that go viral a lot and a lot of times it's people cooking some amazing foods, you know, it's uh, beauty things, of course, lifestyle, entertainment, we always see something funny goes viral. Um, so this makes sense. So it's kind of giving us the four, uh, you know, if we don't know what direction we want to go, then this is definitely a great tool to use. So you can utilize and maximize the type of brand that you want to launch, right? So let's say we know the type of brand we launch in. We know the type of content. We already have our content laid out. We already have a, a calendar. All right, we're going to post this on this day, this on this day, this on this day, right? Well, that's the first part of the hard work that any content creator has to worry about, right? Too bad Chat, G, Chat GPT can't literally create the content for you, right? Now I can, but that's a little bit more in depth, right? Um, but what can we utilize Chat GPT for to help our content posting easier? Well, the second toughest thing to come up with and come up with consistently is the headlines. What is your headline going to be for your post? Right? Think about you already had to come up with 20 to 30 pieces of content for the week or for the month. Now you got to come up with 25 to 30 copyrights, 25 to 30 different types of headlines that you're going to say. That's a whole nother job. Well, until now. So let's just say, for instance, um, out of these categories, we chose food, right? I launched the food brand. So now I have a content calendar of 25 to 30 different contents of food that I'm going to be posting to sell my food brand, right? So now I'm going to ask ChatGPT to help me generate headlines that can go with my content. 
create me a list of five, no, 25 headlines for a TikTok post for a food brand titled it's all vegan so i'm asking chat gpt to create me a list of 25 headlines for a tiktok post for a food brand titled it's all vegan and let's see what happens so i already the goal is get you got to give chat GPT as much information as possible and you got to be very direct with your questions. Right. So I told it 25 potential headlines or 25 headlines for a TikTok post for a food brand, but not just any food brand. What is the title of the food brand? It's all vegan. So now it can take the information that I gave it and cultivate some popping headlines so now with a click of a button as we see it is generating us 25 amazing headlines right so if you see these headlines they're cooking up some good stuff three easy vegan recipes you can make in under 10 minutes have you tried our vegan cauliflower buffalo wings yet the ultimate vegan comfort food mac and cheese healthy vegan meal prep for the week It's so many different awesome ideas so now of course if i have a vegan brand some of these recipes might not be mine but it's so easy to plug and play with some of these options for instance number three the ultimate vegan comfort food instead of mac and cheese i can put whatever my main recipe is right have you tried our vegan such and such such yet you know, so it's a lot of different ways you can plug and play. And then also, if I had a menu, I can get more direct and I can tell TikTok to create my headlines based off my menu items. So it's all about what we are telling it to do. All right. So that is how you generate your headlines, guys. See you on the next one. All right, guys, we're back at it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attack the second aspect of it all, guys. All right. So we got our content. All right. We got our headlines. Right. So the next thing is before we actually post the post, we got to have hashtags hashtags is the second key thing now granted if we look in the headlines chat gpt was so kindly to provide us with a couple headlines i mean i'm sorry a couple hashtags already right but two hashtags per post isn't enough right but now that poses another question how many hashtags are enough Let's ask Chad GPT. How many hashtags is safe to include in my TikTok post? Let's see what TikTok has to say. All right, so it's saying that you are allowed to use up to 30 per post, but it doesn't recommend it because it look it could look spammy and decrease your visibility. A good rule of thumb that it says is between five and 10 relevant hashtags per post. And that's also what we recommend as well. Um, the same amount. 
but that is awesome. All right. So now that we know how many hashtags that we can use, now it is time to create the hashtags. Create me a list of 10 hashtags for a TikTok post for a food brand titled It's <coughs> All Vegan. All right, create me a list of 10 hashtags for a TikTok post for a food brand titled It's All Vegan. And let's see what they come up with. And before we know it, here go our hashtags. Boom. And also I could take some of these hashtags from up here as well, but it got us our 10 hashtags. Now, what we also could do is we could tell it to generate us 30 and we can choose the best out of the 30 that we feel that is more relevant to our content all right so that's pretty much what you want to do guys on that end now before you hit that post button a next question may arise am i posting at the right time how do i know when is the right time and the best time to post on TikTok? Is there a right time? Is there a best time? Let's ask Chat GPT. What is the best time frames to post on TikTok? What is the best time frames to post on TikTok? Let's see what it says. All right. So one of the key things is it definitely varies upon specific audiences and locations. So this is more for people that don't know their audience. They don't know or understand or don't even have an audience. If you're just brand new on TikTok, then you know, you're not able to look inside of your analytics and see, okay, well, this is the time that I should be posting, or this is the time that my audience is on majority of the time, right? So if you don't have that type of information, then you want to follow the rule of thumb. And it says Post but during peak users hours, according to TikTok, the app's peak users hours are between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. on weekdays, right? That's awesome. So, yeah, that, that's if I was you guys, that's what I would start if you don't know your audience. Also, try posting at different times throughout the day and on different days of the week to see when your content gets the most engagement. Test different times. While peak usage hours are a good starting point, it's important to test different posting times to see what works best for your audience. So once you build your audience, that's when I would recommend to start testing different times. Until then, just stick to the 11 to 5 on weekdays. All right, so you can maximize your time and your efforts. All right. And now that you have that information in store, guys, hit that post button. Now you have a chat gpt generated post along with your uh ability to upload the content just allow chat gpt to do the rest guys it'll save you so much time and efforts all right so without further ado see you on the next one all right guys we're back to it 
So now pretty much we're going to get into the ad side of TikTok. So we was talking about the content marketing aspect as far as how to utilize ChatGPT to maximize your marketing efforts on the content side, right? We want to control all controllables, control everything we are in control of. So that's what exactly what we did. Now, there is a whole other side to TikTok, and this is the advertising side. All right. So what we're looking at right now is called the ads manager, TikTok ads manager. So pretty much you have to create a ads manager account for you to have access to this is very simple. All you have to do is you go to Google and just type in TikTok ads manager and you're going to see the very first link that pops up to where you can actually create you a TikTok ads manager. Very simple and easy, right? And once you create that ads manager, you're going to end up on a platform that looks exactly like this. All right. So this is what your ad managers looks will look like. Uh, if you look at the right top where it says create ad, this is where you will get rolling. All right. So we're going to do just that. We're going to hit that create ad button. All right. So which ad manager mode best fits your business needs? So if you are a new person to the advertising game, I suggest hitting simplified mode. Uh, that way that, you know, you don't have to uh, be in control of all the different settings that you may not be aware of. Um, you can just let TikTok make the best decision for you. Um, keep in mind, even though, of course, um, you know, it's a pay to play game. Um, they only win when you win. Right. So they're going to make sure that they can help you maximize your dollar. You know, if you spend money on advertising, they're going to make sure you reach people. All right. So just, you know, keep it simple for yourself. If you don't know how to work it, uh, we're going to hop in custom mode just so we can kind of see all the functionalities. All right. So in this section, this is the advertising objective section. Right. All right. So. In the advertising objective section, there's a lot of different ways uh, where you can drive traffic, right? Now, what if you are brand new to this and you don't know which one to choose, right? There's all these different options and you don't wanna make the wrong decision. Is there a wrong decision? Let's ask Chad GPT. So, Remember, this section is the advertising objective section. So we're going to come over here. We're going to ask, what is the best advertising objective option in the TikTok ads manager? for a full brand business called It's All Vegan. What is the best, what is the best advertising objective option in the TikTok ads manager for a full brand business called It's All Vegan? Let's see what they got to say. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. All right, so it is generating. It is generating, and what does it got to say? The best advertising objective option in the TikTok ads manager for a full brand business called It's All Vegan with depend on the Pacific Goals. So technically, it's not a wrong or right way. It just depends on your goals, right? So depending on your goal, that is what you would choose based on the goal. So based on this uh, generated answer, we have four different options, right? So we got traffic, we got conversions, we got app installments, we got food uh, brand awareness. 
right? So it says, if your goal is to drive traffic to your website or e-commerce platform where customers can purchase, purchase your vegan products, the traffic objective could be a good option. This objective will optimize your ads to drive clicks to your website, right? Conversions. If your goal is to drive specific actions on your web website, such as completing a purchase or signing up for a newsletter, the conversions objective could be a good option. App installs. If you have a mobile app for your vegan brand, you see how uh, tailored it is uh, to my Pacific brand, not only to a food brand, but it's talking about my my vegan brand is giving me the best options tailored to my vegan food brand you know so once again guys it's all about how you talk to the software it's all about how you talk to the ai all right you ask the right questions you're going to get the right answers all right so basically what it's saying there's no wrong answer it's all about my goals right so what is our goal here all right so if i have a food brand and i'm trying to drive traffic um if I'm trying to build brand awareness, app conversions, etc. So since we are a food brand that just opened up, we're actually, you know, still building the store. And this is just hypothetically speaking, you know, as a new business, um, I'm probably just going to choose awareness, you know, and in this section of awareness is right here, which is under reach. All right. Campaign name. I'm gonna put test. All right, special ads category. There's no special ads being ran. This is if you're running campaigns that fall under such categories like real estate, credit industry. Uh, if you're trying to hire, uh, you would select that option. All right, and then you have a couple other different options that really doesn't a vibe to what we're trying to do at the moment. So we're gonna hit continue. All right, and that is the ad section, guys. Let's attack the ad group section next. All right, guys, so we're pretty much in the ad group section. All right, so this is where all the magic happens. So pretty much this is where we can pretty much choose the type of audience that we want to target. All right. All right. So as we scroll, we scroll, we scroll, now we're in the targeting section. So this section controls location, gender, age. Also controls language, spending power, household income, audiences, all right? And then also, you know, different ways you can target as far as interests and behaviors and things of that nature, right? Devices, a lot of different, a lot of different ways that you can uh, target right so what we're going to do is we're going to use chat gpt to help us out with the target settings because if i am a food brand called it's all vegan and i just launched it my advertising butter my advertising budget is my bread and butter and i want to spend it wisely right so the goal is to spend your money as wisely as possible, right? As you see on the right, it shows your available audience right here in this section. And then under there, it says fairly broad. And then it shows you how many people you're able to reach with the, the settings that is set right now. Now this number is okay, right? That's a huge number. That's like a hundred million plus people that you can reach. Estimated result, a little bit less than 12,000 people on a daily basis. Now, there is a huge difference between reaching 100 million people and reaching 100 million people that all like vegan food, right? So there's a big, big difference, right? And then also it's a difference in reaching 100 million people, especially in a certain location. If I'm located in Atlanta, Georgia, right? If I'm located in Atlanta, Georgia, then I want to make sure that I'm able to reach people that are within my radius, right? <clears throat> and then also, depending on uh, how much information I know about my brand, I want to try to limit the age because 
if I think vegan, vegan is pretty healthy, you know, unless it's, you know, looking like hot dogs and cheeseburgers and pizza, then I might not attract the younger audience, right? So 13 to 17 might not be my target audience, but this is just, I'm just guessing. But let's just see if Chad GPT can help us out. So, so we have targeting, we have the gender, we have the age, we have the location. So location is kind of self-explanatory, but let's see if it can help us out with gender and age. What is the best target settings for a tick? Talk ad group for for gender and age for a business for a vegan food business. called it's all vegan what is the best target settings for a tiktok ad group for gender and age for a vegan food business called it's all vegan let's see All right. This is some great insight, guys. <laughs> so I was kind of right on the younger generation, right? Oh, no, I was wrong. So pretty much this is what we got. For gender, it says, since the vegan lifestyle is becoming more mainstream, targeting both men and women could be a good strategy. However, if your products are specifically geared towards one gender, for example, vegan protein powders for men, you might want to target the gender specifically. Age, the age range of your target audience will depend on the specific products or services. However, it's worth noting the younger generation tend to be more interested in plant-based diets and sustainable, sustainable living. As such, targeting users age 18 to 34 could be a good starting point. So that is good, right? So basically based on the information that is providing us, we probably wanna stick with all genders unless we have a particular product that is geared to a certain gender. As far as age range, it's telling us that 18 to 34 might be a good starting point. So that's not bad. And I, I mean, I would figure that the older you are, the more interested you'll be into a, a plant based lifestyle. You know, when you get older, you got to really, really watch what you eat more and more. So that's good. That's some good insight. All right. Languages will kind of keep it as is spending power, uh, spending power. High spending users typically spend more on purchases than the average user. We'll kind of just leave it as all. Household income. So when it comes to household income, we'll probably just use all. Uh, when it comes to uh, vegan food, food period. I mean, it's not like it's a five star restaurant like Ruth Chris, or anything like that. So it's pretty affordable. Um, so audiences, right? So. If you are new to the TikTok ads manager, you've never ran an ad, anything like that, you don't have any data previously, you want to start with the interest and behavior section. All right. This section right here, where it says customized audience, lookalike audience, we can create one, but this is only if we have data. Right, we can create custom audiences based off traffic to our website. We can create a lookalike audience from a, a 
a successful interest-based audience that has already gen generated us a lot of data, a lot of information, we then can create a lookalike audience of that. So let's say if we have a website and we have over 500 sales on that website, we then can use that data and create a lookalike audience. And we're basically telling TikTok, hey, out of these 500 sales, I want you to look at the people that bought bought the product and I want you to find me a lookalike audience of this people. And we can also determine, tell them, hey, I want you to find the top 1% of this 500 people, you know? So, but yeah, start with the interest. So let's say we don't know what type of interests and behaviors to use. You know, like I said, we're new to this section. We can use chat GPT to help us out. Let's see. What interests and behaviors would be best? We'll copy and paste this this time. <laughs> What interests and behaviors is the best target settings for a TikTok ad group? What interest behaviors is the best, is best, is best for target settings for a TikTok ad group, for ad group, for a vegan food business called It's All Vegan. All right, let's see what they come up with. All right, like I said, it's all about the questions, guys. You gotta, you gotta really tailor your, your tasks and your questions uh, to make sure it's fitting, uh, fitting perfectly. All right. So veganism, health and wellness, environmentalism, foodies. All right. So targeting users have shown interest in veganism, veterinarianism, or plant-based diets can be a good. All right. So let's try these key terms. Let's try these key words. All right, put that in there. All right, it doesn't pop up. Let's kind of delete it. Let's see. Vegan. All right, it's a whole bunch of vegan. Vegan, vegan, vegan. All right. So let's see. Veginarianism. <laughs> let's see if that pops up. It doesn't. All right, health and wellness. Nope, no data. All right, so let's just type in vegan. All right, let me exit out, vegan. All right, so it didn't really do an excellent job in the interest and behavior section as so far. I mean, we got a couple other words we can try, but uh, the good thing is since our um, topic is very easy, vegan, of course, vegan is the key word. So of course we want to type in vegan and see what pops up. A lot, a lot of different options, you know, vegan protein, vegan meals, vegan recipes, so it's a lot of different options that pop up. So uh, we'll just use a few of them. All right. So boom, we'll start there, right? Devices. Of course, we just want to use all devices. All right. Budget. All right. So when it comes to budget, TikTok has a minimum. You can only, you can't spend no less than $20 a day or $280 a month, all right? So just keep that in mind. Um, we'll just keep it as is, all right? Uh, schedule, you can control the schedule as you want, 
Uh, we'll just keep the schedule as is. All right. Bidding and optimization. All right. So when it comes to the bidding and optimization frequency cap, all right, you have the option to control the frequency cap. So this is pretty much allowing you to choose how many times do you want one person to see your ad per day, per week. All right. So they have some um, already pre-selected frequency caps right and you can customize it if you want it's already set on show ads no more than three times every seven days to one person all right we can just keep it there all right bid control right so bid control bid control is if you don't understand the bid control bid has everything to do compared to an auction Right. If you ever been to an auction, seen auctions on TVs where you got the fast talking guy, uh, one, 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 we got, uh, going for the one, going for the one, two, two. Do we get a three? Do we get a three? Do we got a four? Do we got to do a four? Do we got a five? Sold to the highest bidder. This is what big control is on the Internet in advertising world. That's what it is. All right. So the goal is to spend the lowest, but at the same time, get the same result. So where do these numbers come from? Well, they are suggesting a bidding of $4.85, right? So this bid is set up to where you're bidding per thousand impressions. So basically this number is based off the competition. The competition, people in the advertising world, based on analytics, they are willing to spend four dollars and 85 cents to reach a thousand impressions all right so you can either just go with the bid the bid that's already set in place or if you're more advanced you can you know and to be more advanced it really comes with experience right you got to really have experience to uh really really utilize the bid control and be able to really maximize and you know get a lower amount, et cetera, et cetera. So, but we'll just leave it as the number that's set. All right. And that is it for the ad group. All right, guys. So now we're at the last stage, and that's the ad section. All right. So when it comes to the ads right pretty simple right now uh tiktok is uh fairly different from uh you know i would say facebook instagram because they actually give you the option to either run the ad from your page or you can use a custom identity page right so you can just create a custom identity and just run it so whenever they're scrolling and they see the ad it doesn't necessarily have to come from your page so i think that's cool now if you want to use it from your page you see where it says use your tiktok use tiktok account to deliver spark ads right so you just hit that and then it'll give you the option to select your page but for this example uh i am doing a full brand that i have that's imaginary it's not real so i'm going to use the custom identity it's all vegan right and i might just create this while i'm playing it's not not a bad not a bad brand at all all right so now i already got the video you know i already had it uploaded uh it's just a video um that we're gonna use that is someone cooking vegan food all right and last but not least we got the text what are we gonna say well, you know, chat GPT is going to help us out, All right? Create a text for, create a unique headline, we'll call it a headline for a Copy and paste (laughs) 
for a TikTok ad for a see what they got. And what we could have said is create us a create us five unique headlines. That way we can choose from. All right, and then they actually gave us a couple to choose from. Smart. How smart is AI? So it gave us, what, five options? Oh, keep going. Okay. So I'm just going to choose the first one. All right. We, we know the power of the AI now. I'm just going to choose that first one. All right. Um, then I have the option to do a call of action. Right. And then I can send it to a web page. But since it is a uh, a website that doesn't, you know, isn't existence because I just created this brand. We're going to not use the call of action. But uh, for you guys that are, you know, already have your business established and you're ready to send traffic to the actual website, then you will hit this call of action button. All right. And then you come down here and you can copy and paste your website or the web page, the landing page, whatever. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You hit it here. You paste your URL in there, and then whenever someone clicks on your ad, it'll take them directly there, all right? But for this example, no call of action, and that's pretty much it, guys, you know? Um, of course, you have some more in-depth information where we probably go on on another course, a more in-depth, uh, you know, fully, solely focused on TikTok as far as the pixel settings and stuff like that. Um, but the main objectives was to show you how to utilize it for chat GPT, right? And then after that, guys, you just hit the submit button and your ad is created, all right? And you had the help of chat GPT to do that. All right, see you on the next one. All right, guys, so we just wrapped up on the ad creation. So now, I want to tap into another segment, guys, you know, to kind of really show you what else can you do with ChatGPT to help you out on TikTok. So we talked about the content marketing aspect of TikTok. We talked about uh, the advertising aspect, but there's a whole other business model and a whole other method to drive traffic. What that may be? Influencers. Mm -hmm. We see it all the time across multiple different types of social media platforms to where you're able to drive traffic from people that have big followings, big pages and et cetera. So how can you get an influencer to help your brand, share your content, share your page, et cetera? So there's a few different ways and we're going to use chat GPT. Now, before ChatGPT, what used to happen was you can go to a website called Fiverr and you can pay someone to put together an influencer list for you. Well, no longer do you have to pay anybody to do that because ChatGPT can do the work for you. For example, I have a vegan food business called It's All Vegan, right? And I need influencers that which, you know, would share my brand. How would I know? Where do I start? So I'm going to ask ChatGPT a question. Create me a list of influencers on TikTok that are known to do promotion for food brands. And let's see what happens. All right, so... With a click of a button, it was able to create us a list of TikTok influencers that are known to do promotion for food brands. The first one, Tabitha Brown. Tabitha is a vegan influencer who shares healthy plant-based recipes and promotes brands that align with her values. That alone is amazing. Not only does it give you their tag, but it also tells you a little backstory on them. Right? So, boom, guys. As easy as that. 
as easy as a question, right? So that's one way you can go about it. Another way is, what if you don't want to be going directly and, you know, spending time trying to reach out to these people? What's another way that you can reach out to influencers? Create me a list of websites that offer influencer marketing. That offer TikTok influencer marketing. There we go. We got a whole list of websites that offer social media influencer marketing. So you have options to where, you know, you can go directly to them or you can actually reach out to companies and you can pay them to do the work. All right. But guys, this is how you can reach out to influencers and start getting some campaigns rolling. All right. But other than that, guys, that's it. You know, this is every way that you can maximize chat GPT for TikTok marketing, right? This is the way, all right? So I hope this was useful for you guys. I hope you take this information and I just hope that you just do wonders. You make amazing things happen. And guys, you know how it goes. I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys, you made it. All right, let's get it. All right, so I go by Bernard Martin. All right. I'm one of the founders of WAN Financial Solutions. The other half is my beautiful wife, Becky Martin, which is Miss Wham, the credit queen. All right. So um, here we are. All right. So um, like I said, this is about chat GPT for credit repair. All right. We're going to show you how to utilize chat GPT to take your credit to heights that's never been seen probably. Right. All right, so first and foremost, uh, before we kind of get into the uses of ChatGPT, we need to get into, you know, the foundations. You know, we might have some people here that, you know, they want to get started the fast way with ChatGPT, but they might not fully understand, you know, what a credit score is. So I just want to kind of go on, go over a few things uh, so you guys can know and see and understand uh, what is a credit score. All right, so this is just an example. Um, you know, we can't be showing you guys our actual clients' uh, information, so I'm just grabbing uh, some things, some images, so just I can explain uh, what it is. As you can see, this is just an image on Google, but just so you can understand, uh, what is a credit score? So a credit score is pretty much your credit behavior, right? your credit behavior as far as you know uh your credit what have you been using your credit with whether it's credit cards loans have you been paying things on time are you paying your your house on time your bills on time right uh are you borrowing money and paying it back on time pretty much and if you're not uh what is that you know how bad is it how's your score looking you know uh how many times have you tried to apply for credit how many times have you tried to apply for a loan? You know, uh, things of that nature. How how old and how new is your credit age? You know, how long have you had credit? You know, uh, have you do you have any repossessions? Do you have any you know closed accounts like etc. Like it gets deep, right? So that kind of makes up your credit score. So as you see, this is an example. Uh, you got three credit bureaus. You got TransUnion, you got Equifax, and you got Experian. All right. So for uh, for now, we're looking at two of the three bureaus. Um, each of them provides their own separate credit score. So this is just an example uh, of a credit score um, on TransUnion. This is an example of a 752, and the other one's a 750. Obviously, they're both excellent. 
right? Uh, credit score goes down from 300 all the way up to 850. All right, that's the ranges. All right, so now that we understand what a credit score is, let's get into the next one. All right, guys, we're back at it. All right, so now we want to kind of get into some more foundational things, um, you know, just for everyone that, you know, doesn't fully understand uh, credit and, you know, what is it and what is it about, right? All right, so let me share my screen with you guys. Provide y'all with some information. Right, right. All right, so here's another image. This is an image that pretty much breaks down your credit health, all right? So everyone has a credit profile, all right? Every human's profile is different from, you know, everyone else's, it, you know, most of the time your, your, your uh, profile will be very unique. And, you know, it's kind of based on your life, right? Um, so to kind of get it down, uh, the first thing is credit card utilization. All right, credit card utilization makes up roughly about 30, 30 to 35% of your credit score. All right, so you, uh, credit card utilization is pretty much, uh, let's say for example, if you have a credit card with a thousand dollar limit and you use a hundred dollars, that means that you have a 10% credit card utilization. You use 10% of that amount on that card all right so to look good to lenders you want to have at least we recommend under 10 percent five percent but uh the lowest recommendation is actually about 35 percent you want to keep your credit card utilization at least under 35 uh, percent all right um so that's pretty much credit card utilization uh payment history so payment history you know, makes up a good bit of your score as well. Uh, payment history is pretty much, you know, you paying your bills on time, just to sum it up. So if it's anything less than 100%, then that means at some point in time, you know, you might've paid your mortgage late. You might've paid a credit card late. Even if you had the money and you just made a mistake in paying it late, it doesn't matter. If you pay it late, that affects your credit score, all right? And the credit bureaus, you know, a lender is when they're looking at your credit report, let's say you got, you got money, you don't really need credit, but you, you apply and they see that your payment history is at 50%. They're not giving you nothing because what that tells them is you're, you are a irresponsible person. All right. So this kind of shows, you know, also how responsible you are. All right. All right. Next one, derogatories. So derogatories, as it says, the number of collection accounts, bankruptcies, foreclosures, silver judgments, tax liens, things of that nature. So, you know, of course, the goal is to have no derogatories, you know. Um, so that's what derogatories are. Next one, age of credit history. So this is the age of your credit history. How long have you had credit? All right. So it doesn't matter how old you are. You can be 40, 50 years old, but if you've never had anything on your credit, then you won't have any history, which most of the time people, you know, you start getting building that history, you know, roughly when you hit 18, 19, uh, 20, whatever. Uh, but yeah, your credit history. So lenders want, want to see at least five years, you know, you have like at least a five year history. All right. And what are some things that can build that history? Trade lines, primary accounts. And we'll get into that a little later. Uh, and then, of course, total accounts. So total accounts. Lenders like to see at least 10 total accounts. So total accounts, you know, that's pretty much open accounts, not just total open. So what's the difference between open and closed? Let's say you buy a car and you finish paying it off. It turns into a closed uh, account. But while you're paying on it, it remains as an open account, a credit card open account, right? If you get something from Aaron's and Badcock, that's an open account, mortgage open account, right? So these are open accounts, all right? Uh, credit card inquiries, all right? Credit card inquiries, that's when you are applying for a loan, you're applying for a credit card. And whether you get approved or not, 
depending on the lender, it will report on if not one credit bureau, all three, you know? So, um, you know, you want to keep your inquiries low uh, because if you got a lot of inquiries and you try to get, uh, you know, apply for loans, they're going to be like, oh, he's shopping everywhere. Like he must be, he must really need money bad. Like we don't need a client like that that's hurting for money because chances are they're not going to be able to pay us back as in a timely fashion. It's how they're looking at it. So that pretty much breaks down a, uh, a credit health profile. All right. See you on the next one. All right, guys. So let's get back to it. So now we're going to kind of get into some tactical things, some uh, some some very uh, zero uh, laser focused things, because uh, a lot of people credit reports are always different. All right. It's always different. You know, uh, individual one may be uh, fighting to get, you know, get certain things off their credit. Let's say individual one, you know, may have a derogatory, you know what I'm saying? They may have a, um, you know, uh, a car on their credit that, you know, they just couldn't make the payments on and it, you know, went to collections, you know, um, or we got another person that has been doing good, but they, they made some late payments a few times and now it's on a credit report and they're trying to get that off. So. A lot of times, some people just have one situation, a few situations, and some of them got more than that, right? So we're going to focus on a particular situation. So uh, this is for late payments, all right? Remember, the goal is to have your late payment, uh, late payments at 100%, all right? So how do we do that? What if we got some late payments on our uh, on our credit report? So we want to use law 15 USC 1666B. All right, that's the law we want to use to remove late payments. All right, so we're going to tell ChatGPT to do that for us. Create me a letter using the 15 USC 1666B law. Certainly, I can help you with a letter citing that law. Telling y'all this is this is life changing. This is a game changer, y'all. This is a game changer. All right. All right. So now, if you notice, right. Dear sir, madam, I am writing to dispute a billing error on my credit card account. So it put credit card account because it's just, you know, putting that as an example. All right. Now, let's just say it's something else. Let's say you have a, uh, let's say a late payment on your mortgage. You know, you put mortgage, you know, instead of credit card. Credit cards are mostly uh, the ones that are reported for late payments. That's why this is the standard one that was used. But you know, you can change it to whatever you need. Keep in mind, this is a template. This provides you with the foundation of the letter with the, with the law used. You fill in the rest. All right. But that's it, y'all. That's how you get your late payments removed. All right. Gone. All right, y'all. Back to it. Back to it. All right, so now we're gonna get into you know another laser focus uh, problem that a lot of people face with their credit profiles, and the next one is a lot of times normally inquiries. Uh, inquiries, uh, once again, that is when you are applying for credit cards, credit uh, loans, and things of that nature. Uh, whenever you do that, whether you get approved or not, it gets on your credit as an inquiry uh, and it just depends on who they report to that will determine where that inquiry lands. Now having inquiries if you have too many it can definitely hurt your chances of securing credit lines and credit cards and loans and homes and cars and you know it definitely affects your credit score. All right 
So with that being said, let's get into how to remove inquiries. Well, it's a letter. All it is is a letter, all right? Using a law on the letter and you send it to them, all right? And if you think about it, every time that we're trying to get something off our credit report, we're utilizing a law. The reason why a law is used and works to remove things off the credit because technically what these guys are doing is illegal, but you have to use the law to prove the innocence. All right. Just like when you hire a lawyer and you know you you know you're fighting for your life, fighting for your freedom. You hired a lawyer because the lawyer knows the law and they use the law to fight your case to maintain your freedom. That's all we're doing. All right. So we need to get inquiries off our credit. So we're gonna tell Chat GPT, create me a letter using the the 15 USC S1681 C1 ABI3 law. That's a long one. But guess what? Nothing's too much for Chat GPT. They just shooting out these letters. Like I said, y'all, all you once you find out what law is for what, then the rest is history. All right, the rest is history. That quick. That quick. It was able to spit that out. So, like I said, it depends on you know where your inquiries are showing up. You may have to print out three of the same letters. If you got inquiries across the board, you know, you, you, you know, you fill in the blanks, mail this information in, and that's it. That's it, y'all. All right. And also, let me throw this out there too. Uh, whenever you're sending in information, it's a certain way to send it in for you to maximize results. All right. I should have said this in the beginning, but I'm going to say it now and I'm going to say it a few more times throughout this course. The easiest way to remember is remember these three terms, upload, fax, mail. All right. Whenever you're sending these letters in, you can take this report. Let's say, all right, one of the credit bureaus is Experian. You're going to take the document, put it on Word document, fill in the blanks, change a couple words download the PDF file, and then you're going to upload this report to Experian. All right, you can go to Experian.com and you can upload it directly to the bureau. All right, for Equifax, you want to print out this document and fax it to them. For, Trans for TransUnion, you want to print it out, envelope, mail it certified mail these are the best ways to get these reports to these agencies they all accept uh information differently all right so well they all accepted the same but for you to really like get the the type of results that you need you want to send it these ways all right gone see you on the next one. all right guys we back at it all right, so let's get into it again. Let's get into some more, some more sauce. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna show you how to utilize a letter to report anything inaccurate on your profile. I don't care if it's a wrong letter in a address. It's a wrong letter in any documentation on your profile. This is the letter that you send. All right. Well, first, the law that you use is 15 U.S.C. 1681-E-B, all right? This is for compliance procedures, all right? Pretty much telling them that everything needs to be 100% maximum accuracy, all right? So, Chad GPT, create me a letter using the... 15 U.S.C. 1681 E.B. Law. 
Boom. And then, as you see, like, I love how it's doing it because first it shows you what it is and what it's used for, just like I'm telling you, and then it provides you with the template. So this is amazing, y'all. This is like, this is great. This is great. Now, of course, don't, you know, I know I'm, I might be moving a little fast, but y'all know y'all going to have, if you are watching this, you have access to pause this. So whenever I'm on a screen showing the law, that's when you pause it, you write it down, screenshot it, however you need it. That way you can utilize ChatGP2 to do the same thing that I'm showing you. All right. And that's how you do it, y'all. That's it. Go on. All right, guys, we back at it. We back at it. All right, so next. Next, we about to get into medical bills. All right. Another thing that a lot of people, you know, have issues with is medical bills. And sometimes, you know, medical bills is like sometimes you it's out of your control to a certain degree because, you know, just think about it. Let's just say you you having a regular day and, you know, a certain thing happens, whether it's an accident or you plan activity, sports, break a leg. And now you in a unexpectedly in the ER and you know, or if you got to be there overnight through some days, that medical bill can rack up and you might not have the insurance. So even if you got insurance, your, you know, the fees on your end, the co-pays is outrageous, the deductible not being met, whole bunch of uh, foolery, right? But a lot of times it ends up with your, uh, your credit profile, nothing you can do about it, but fight it. But guess what? there are laws in place that makes it to where the credit bureaus aren't and can't do that but just like a lawyer you just got to know the laws so there are actually two laws that you can use to attack medical bills all right so the first one is 15 usc 1681 a3 abc all right create create me a letter using the law and it does just that as it says it's going to tell you that you know i didn't tell you on this one but this one is a great one for medical bills all right great one for medical bills As you see, it's cooking it up, cooking it up. All right. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another one. All right. Create me a letter using the 15 USC before law. All right, this is another one that's good to fight medical bills. All right. So this is for limitation on disclosure. All right. This is a great one to use, y'all. So those two are some ones that we like when it's like medical bill focus. Those are the two laws we use. All right. See you on the next one. All right, guys, we're back at it. So we pretty much showed you guys a lot of the, you know, foundational, you know, aspects and pretty much really gave you an entire sauce on how to remove things off of your credit report. Uh, utilizing chat GPT now uh, pretty much to wrap this up guys we're gonna give you some you know some major home run sauce all right so what we're going to do we're going to unveil reveal our special sequence all right so 
we have a special sequence that works every time. So when we say sequence, pretty much we have a pretty much a step by step guide uh, that we follow that pretty much works 99.9% .9 of the time to remove anything and everything that we want removed off credit reports. All right. It's a certain way that we go about it and we're about to give you their entire sauce and we're going to show you how to use it inside of chat GPT. All right. So here we are. So this works for anything and everything. It doesn't matter. Late payments, student loans, bankruptcies, um, derogatories, collections, like you name it, it works. All right. Child support, like it doesn't matter. It works. So the first thing that we do is we file a FTC report. All right. A FTC report is filed. All right. So the FTC stands for Federal Trade Commission. All right. We file a, comp uh, a complaint with them. All right. Now, this isn't a letter. This is actually you go to the website. So now the question is, what is a FTC report? Right. How do you file it? OK, so not only do we tell chat GPT what to do, but we can ask chat GPT questions as well. Get well, instead of asking the question, we're just going to get straight to the point. Give me a step. Give me step by step instructions. On how to file a FTC report. And here it goes. It gives me the step by step. So you can literally take these steps and follow it step by step. You go to the FTC.gov and pretty much you follow the exact steps. File the complaint. All right. So you're going to be filing the complaint to the debtor, the creditor. All right. Whoever account that you're fighting, you're filing the complaint with them. All right. And also, you're going to also file a complaint with the credit bureaus. All right. So you're going to do it. You're going to be filing a lot of complaints. So it depends like. OK, let's say you have an account with Santander and then you also have an account. Uh, well, not the account, but you have an account with Santander and Santander is across all the credit bureaus. So you're going to file a complaint on Santander and you're going to file a complaint on all of the credit bureaus as well. All right. So this is the first thing that we do. So yeah, you follow these instructions. You go on their website, you file a complaint after after you file a complaint they allow you to print out the complaint once you print out that complaint you mail it you met i'm sorry upload fax in mail all right you print out this complaint and you upload it to experian you fax it to transunion and you mail it i'm sorry I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you upload it to Experian, you fax it to Equifax, and you mail it to TransUnion Certified Mail. That's the step two after you do the FTC report. Basically showing them like, hey, we filed a complaint on you guys. Like, we're serious. All right. Next step. Right. Next step is we hit them with a letter. All right. What letter? We using the law 15 UFC code 1681B. So, Chat GPT, create me a letter using the law 15. All right, this is a permissible purpose letter. So let's get a little bit more detailed. All right. Create me a permissible purpose letter using the 15 USC code 1681B law. 
All right. If y'all remember, we we created this earlier in the uh, in the course. All right. And this works for any account. All right, any account. Now, if you remember, this letter needs to be backdated 60 days. All right. It needs to be backdated 60 days. Why? Because the bureaus have a certain amount of time that they have to respond. So we're going to backdate it so we can speed up the process and make sure that you send this letter certified mail. All right. What's next? Step four. Exactly a week later. I'm sorry. Exactly a week later. You're going to send a demand to comply letter. All right. Chat GPT, create me a demand to comply letter. All right. You're also going to send this certified mail. Remember, you're sending this to all of the credit bureaus that are reporting the inaccurate information. All right. So while that is out getting sent, the very last thing you're going to do is you're going to do three things. You're going to file a complaint with the CFPB, which is the which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And then you're going to file a complaint with the BBB, Better Business Bureau. And then the last thing you're going to do is file a complaint with the eternal attorney general. All right. How do you do that? No worries. We're going to ask chat GPT. How? Well. Give me a step by step instructions. on how to file a complaint with the CFPB. And they give me the step by step. All right, this is very similar to filing a complaint with the FTC. All right, you got to go on the website, same thing. All right. Same question. How do you file a complaint with the BBB? Give me a step-by-step -step instructions. It gives me the step-by-step -step guide. Right? ChatGPT is telling you exactly how to do it, where to do it, what to do. All right, then we're going to ask it the same thing about attorney general. All right, and it's giving you another step-by-step -step guide on how to do that as well. All right, and that's it. 99.9% .9 of the time, guys, when we do this, it's up. It comes right off. All right, this is our sauce, this exact sauce. Remember, if you got this course, you can pause this at any time. So, you know, you guys can pause. So you can, you know, pretty much copy the information down and just copy everything we just did. But chat GPT is pretty much the focal point around this course. You're utilizing chat GPT. We gave you guys the laws. We're telling you exactly what we're doing. All you got to do is, is, is copy and paste this in chat GPT. And it's going to do the same thing that it just did for us. All you got to do is plug in the information, y'all. That's it. All right. That is it. You no longer need a credit repair agency. All you need is chat GPT. What has the world came to? What has the world came to? All right, so now 
at the end of the day, you either got time or you got money. If you got the time, if you got the time, do this. If you don't have the time but got the money, why well, financial solutions? Tap in. <laughs> All right, it's your boy Bernard Martin, half of one financial solutions, signing off. Guys, take the information and, and make it happen, y'all. No more excuses. Gone. What's up? What's up, guys? All right, let's get to it. All right, so um, chat GPT is just an amazing tool. All right, an amazing, amazing tool. And it's just so much you can do with it. But today... We're going to focus on something very particular. Chat GPT for songwriting. All right. Uh, we're going to get into all the cool different ways and just different ideas and giving you guys a, uh, a certain mindset. Because to utilize Chat GTP to its maximum, it's all about the thinking of the mind. Uh, and with that being said, the thinking of the mind is also about what are you asking chat gpt to do all right it's all about what you say and how you say it all right just to sum things up all right so with that being said we're going to kind of get into the the beginning stages all right the fundamentals all right uh whether we're using chat gpt or not um for songwriting there are still some fundamental things that has to happen in, in the beginning all right so when it comes to songwriting i compare songwriting to writing an essay all right songwriting to writing an essay it's the same thing right exact same thing okay so what does that mean so in the beginning the stages of writing an essay the first thing you have to do is brainstorm right you have to brainstorm because you have to understand what are you writing about what are you going to write so when it comes to a song it is the same thing right it's the same exact same formula you have to brainstorm right all right so what chat gpt allows you to do is it kind of helps you brainstorm, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask ChatGPT to help us out with songwriting ideas, all right? So for example, we're gonna ask it, let's see, write 10 different ideas and topics I can write a song about. All right. Let's see what it does. It's getting to work. All right. So as you see, it's kicking out these 10 different ideas, right? 10 different ideas. Amazing. All right. So it's like, all right, it's a writer's block, right? It's, it's like, all right, what is the one thing that a songwriter can easily do is get writer's block? Well, guess what? Chat GTP, Chat GPT can help you not get writer's block ever again, right? All right, so as we see, guys, it got us 10 ideas. First love, overcoming challenges, nature, self-discovery, dreams and aspirations, childhood memories, friendship, travel, social issues, reflections on life. <laughs> All right, so these are 10 ideas that we can write about, right? So, boom. So let's just say, okay, um, let's see. What do I want to write about as far as giving you guys an example? What idea do we want to go about? Huh. Let's see. Let's see. 
Maybe we will talk about, huh? Let's see, guys. We're in. The, I'm. I'm like. I'm in the process of this with you guys, so I can like. You know, I want you guys to see this in real time. Like, I want us to be able to really, you know, be in the process process of creating the song. We'll just keep it simple. We'll go with first love. All right, that's what we choose. All right, but. I just want to kind of show you guys like how can you come up with songwriting ideas like this is amazing right it just cuts it all out now i chose first love right let's get even deeper let's get even deeper into the brainstorming right so first love write me let's see five different topics about first love that I could use for creating a song. So now I chose my topic, but first love is kind of, you know, it's kind of, ah, you know, it's a lot of things you can do. It's still kind of, you know, but let's get more in depth. So, okay. What are five different topics based around first love? Okay. The thrill of following love, falling in love, the pain of heartbreak, the nostalgic of looking back. The growth that comes from first love, the enduring power of first love. Wow. These, these are some things that I would have never thought about them all. And I'm sure you can probably relate. So, man, this is uh, this is amazing, guys. This is amazing. So just imagine, OK, how much more in depth you can get, you know, like you can ask chat GTP about anything, right? So, but yeah, guys, this is pretty much a great brainstorming tool. All right, for that, a fantastic brainstorming tool that you can use uh, when it comes to creating uh, ideas, you know, songwriting ideas and, you know, what you can talk about and, you know, just, just a great way to get started. All right. So that ends this module, guys. See you on the next one. All right, guys. All right. So next thing. All right. So we got the idea, right? We know what we're going to talk about. OK, we got the topic. All right. So our topic is first love, right? That's the one we're going to go with for this uh, example. OK, so the next thing that normally all right so when it comes to songwriting there's technically no there's a right or wrong way but there's a lot of different ways you can approach it now when it comes to industry standard 98 percent of the time uh songs are created in a certain format all right so what do i mean by that well the 98% of the people normally start with the chorus, right? It's normally the chorus that we are starting with, all right? So remember what I said, creating songs is very similar to creating an essay, all right? So when you create your essay, you got your main idea, you got your topic, okay? Well, the first thing that you do when you start writing, you write your introduction paragraph, all right? Your introduction paragraph is going to tell us about what you're writing about, right? It's gonna, in, the, in that paragraph, we're gonna know what the essay is about, okay? Well, in song structure, your introduction paragraph is your chorus, your hook. All right, when we listen to the hook and we listen to the chorus, we're going to know what the song is about. All right. So with that being said, all right, 
um, we're going to utilize chat GPT to help us come up with hooks and courses. All right. So our topic is falling in love, right? Now, there are different topics within or first love. I apologize. First love uh, was the, you know, the overall topic, but we can get more in depth as far as first love, right? Now, what we could potentially do, because what we what we initially did was we took first love and then we created five more topics out of first love. Well, every main idea, topic of essay, you have three supporting paragraphs. And inside of those supporting paragraphs, you have supporting details of each paragraph. Each paragraph, you're supporting the main idea. You got three paragraphs that supporting the main idea in different ways. OK, so we're getting to the supporting paragraphs uh, later in the course. But uh, I say that to say this. These different topics about first love, we could also add them, right? That we can add them to our brainstorming list. All right. And we can talk about these and use these inside of our supporting paragraphs. All right. So that's another way to utilize all of this information that we have. Okay. Um, so that's if we want to do it like that. Um, so but we're just going to stick with first love. All right. First love. So uh, what we're going to focus on is the course. OK, so. Chat GPT. Write me five different courses. about first courses for a song about first love. Something went wrong. If this issue persists, please contact us through our help center or help.ai.com. I'm glad this happened because when you're using chat GPT, this does happen sometimes. So I'm glad it did happen. All right. So we're going to hit regenerate response. All right. Still acting up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this. All right. This is good. So you know how to troubleshoot this because this happens all the time. All right. There we go. And we're off to the races. All right, so we asked ChatGPT to write us five different courses for a song about first love. All right, so what did it do? It created us five different courses. All right, so course one, Oh, first love, you were the one. My heart was young, but yours was yours had won. The memories of you still remain. My first love will never be in vain. <laughs> Verse or chorus two. First love, you're hard to forget. The sweetest memories we haven't met. A feeling that I can't deny. My first love will never die. All right, so. Now, before we get into all the courses, um, now keep in mind, ChatGPT is helping you create uh, the words, right? Now, phenomenal. Come up with five different courses, uh, you know, all of them, different lines, different rhymes, all of that, right? Now, you still have to be able to take this and make it fit in whatever instrumental that you choose, right? You have to make it fit in whatever instrumental you choose, okay? 
So in the next in the next module, we'll you know we'll talk about that, but we'll just talk about uh, you know the idea and the generating of the actual words. All right, because a lot of times this is the hard part. All right, course three, first love, you were the start, the first to capture my fragile heart. The memories of us still clear as day. My first love will always stay. <laughs> course four, first love, you were the one. The first time I knew love had come. The memories of you still remain. My first love will never be in vain. Course five, first love, you were the one, a feeling that can be reversed. The memories of us still alive. My first love will always thrive. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, guys. You know, um, you know, five different courses about uh, about love, first love. All right. So if you was ever experiencing writer's block and having issues with just coming up with the terminologies and what to say, you know, like this is how to do it. This is how to make your life so much easier so you don't have to focus on what to say. You can focus on how to say it. All right. Not too hard. See you in the next one. All right, guys, back to it. All right, so we got our hooks, we got our choruses. All right, we got the words, we got the terminologies and all of those cool things. All right, so the next step is how do we take this and how do we place it on a instrumental, right? So great question, let's do it. All right, so uh, for this example, I just grabbed a random beat. All right, um, so this is a beat we're gonna use. Uh, I just grabbed the first one. Sounds like an amazing beat, actually. <laughs> but we're gonna use this for an example. All right. And if you notice, it's titled First Love. So what I did was I just searched first love type beat <laughs> so we can get like right to the niche if he if the producer titled this first love then obviously he it's a reason why the mood the mood gave him that that reason to title it that way <laughs> all right so amazing beat just kind of getting the feel of it all right Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So first, let's get into the fundamentals. So when it comes to uh, placing uh, pre-written words onto a beat that, um, you know, wasn't present prior, then there is going to be two things that's going to take place. Well, yeah, two things. The first thing is adding and subtracting. Well, adding, subtracting, and replacement. We call this the syllable game, all right? Because all of these lines we have, like, for example, course one. Course one, oh, oh, first love, you were the one seven syllables right so the goal is to make these seven syllables fit on the first line properly right the goal is to make these seven syllables fit so the second thing that we're we may have to do all right the first thing was adding subtracting replacing all right we call that the syllable game the next thing we will have to do is speed up or slow down. All right. 
Because when we take these seven syllables, let's say, okay, we like the seven syllables. We don't have to add anything. We don't have to subtract anything. We don't have to replace anything. We may have to speed it up or slow it down. That all determines on the tempo of the beat. All right, how fast is the beat? How slow is the beat? That let us know what we have to do. All right, so for instance, oh, first love, you were the one. Let's see. Oh, first love, you were the one. <laughs> oh, first love, you were the one. <laughs> oh, first love, you were the one. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, first love, you were the one. Uh, my heart was young, but yours had won. <laughs> the memories of you still remain. My first love will never be in vain. Oh, first love, you were the one. Uh, my heart was young, but yours had won. <laughs> the memories of you still remain. <laughs> my first love will never be in vain. One take Drake, y'all. All first take, all first take. <laughs> but, you know, you guys see how, you know, that was able to fit. How? Because I was saying it at a certain pace. Right. So you could easily just copy and paste what chat GPT has created for you and just paste it. All right. So, you know, that's that's one way of doing it. Just saying it at a certain uh, tempo that will match the beat perfectly. All right. So what about what about the second one? First love you. You're hard to forget. Uh, first love, you're hard to forget. Huh. The sweetest memories you haven't met. Huh. A feeling that I can't deny. My first love will never die. My first love will never die. First love, you're hard to forget. Hey, the sweetest memories we haven't met. Hey, a feeling that I can't deny. My first love will never die. My first love will never, 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 never. Y'all see, I added my own twist on that, right? I was just kind of, you know, dancing with it, playing with it, you know? And I encourage you to do the same, all right? Uh, first love, you're hard to forget. The sweetest memories we haven't met. A feeling that I can't deny. My first love will never die. That's if I just say it like that, right? First love, you so hard to forget. First love, you so hard to forget. So notice I added, you're so hard to forget. I added a syllable, right? The sweetest memories we haven't met. The sweetest memories we haven't forgotten. The sweetest memories we haven't had a chance to met. A feeling that I never ever can't deny. My first love promise you would never die. All right, so you see I'm adding syllables, right? So I do that to do this. Like there is a another way that you can go about it. All right, it's so many different ways. So you can copy and paste what is here or or you can add syllables right so this these uh these verse these uh these lines are pretty they're not enough syllables for me to subtract anything and the beat is slow enough to where i don't have to subtract anything so more so is more of adding or maybe replacing and when we say replacing is more so taking a syllable let's say i take the word um Let's see, remain, or let's say love. Let's say I take love away and I add heartfelt. So that I, I took a syllable away to add two syllables. You know, just give me an example. But, and then of course you notice how I was in action, you know, speeding it up, slowing it down. Of course, if you add syllables, uh, you may have to slow it down to fit the syllables, or you may be adding syllables just so you don't have to do any speed changes, right? So, um, so yeah, guys, this is definitely 
how you would place it. All right. This is how you will place it. All right. So. There we are. See you on the next one. All right, guys. So back to it. All right. So uh, next thing we're going to talk about is the second half. All right. So let's get back to the, uh, the fundamentals. All right. So whenever you're creating a song or I'm sorry, essay. All right. We talked about the introduction paragraph. Right. OK. So now we have our introduction paragraph down. We have to create the body. All right. We have to create the body. So a body of an essay normally consists of three paragraphs. All right. Well, a song normally con consists of three verses. All right. Now, um, let me do help you, uh, you know, understand as time changes, so do systems. All right. So nowadays, most songs are two verses. All right. Why is that so? Well, the reason why that is so is because of attention span. Attention span has shortened. All right. Attention span has shortened dramatically. OK, so with attention span decreasing, you're going to notice that, uh, you know, technology and things that we normally like, they're going to change as well. OK, so music. OK, so excuse me. That doesn't mean you can't create a three verse song. OK, that just means to keep the attention of your audience two verses a shorter song may be better all right so just keep that in mind all right now now what we're going to do is we're going to use chat gpt to help us generate verses okay all right so we already have the topic of our song all right which is first love okay uh we have lots of different choruses that we can choose from okay all right so now let's create the body let's create our verses all right all right write me let's see i'm gonna say five 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 is my magic number right write me five different verses for a song about first love. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually say six. And I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you why here in a second. All right, so if you notice, it only created me four lines of per verse. All right, so uh, this is part of the reason why I created six. So first off, before we kind of you know work with what we got, I want to kind of ask Chat GPT a better question. Write me six different sixteen line versus there we go There we go. We cooking now. Now notice chat GPT did not listen. I said 16 lines and 
obviously they're spitting out 12, which is okay because honestly, this is the first time I was able to get 12. Uh, normally they spit out eight. So that's why I did eight. Uh, I'm sorry, six verses, because if you spit out eight, then, you know, eight plus eight, 16, you know, so that's three 16 line verses technically. Uh, but what we'll, we'll make do with this? This is good. All right, so um, what we have is we have six 12 line verses. All right, we looks like our sixth one got cut off, but it's okay. We can just ask it to generate us one if we needed it, but we got enough material. All right, so verse one, my first love, you came and went, a love that I thought was heaven sent. We laughed, the cried, the thick, the thin. But our love was too fragile, too thin. Our heart beats as one, once upon a time. But now our love is just a memory around. The memories we shared, they still remain. My first love will always hurt a special place, no need to explain. The butterflies in my stomach, they flutter so wild. Your eyes, they sparkle like a mischievous child. Our love was young, but it felt so true. My first love, my heart will always be with you. <laughs> okay, Chad GPT. Okay. Not bad. Verse two. We met when we were young, so naive. Our love, it was something we both believed. We spent our days dreaming of the future, but life has a way of making you a doubter. We held hands under the starry skies. I love, it felt like paradise, but the winds of change, they blew us apart. My first love, you'll always, you'll always hold a special place in my heart. The memories of us, they still remain. A love that's pure with no hint of disdain. You taught me how to love, how to feel. My first love, your memories will always be real. Okay. So this is nice. This is some great material, actually. This is some great material. Um, so yeah, this is awesome. So now uh let's go ahead and you know pull the beat out and let's kind of you know, let's kind of work. Let's kind of play around a little bit and see how it sounds on the beat, right? My first love, you came and went. A love that I thought was heaven sent. Uh, we laughed and cried through thick and thin, but our love, it was too fragile, too thin. Uh, our heart beats as once, once upon a time, but now our love is just a memory around. The memories we shared, they still remain. My first love will always hurt for a perfect place, no need to explain. All right, let me get it back, let me get it back. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, the butterflies. All right, hold on, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Uh, uh, uh. The butterflies in my stomach, they flooded so wild. Your eyes, they sparkle like a mischievous child. I love was young, but it felt so true. My first love, my heart will always be with you. Uh, okay, okay. So we definitely know that there's gonna be a lot of uh, subtracting, not a lot, but a couple lines we're gonna have to subtract. All right, verse two. We met when we was young, so naive. I love it was something we both believe. Uh, we spend our days dreaming of the future, but life has a way of making you a doubter. We held hands under the starry skies. Uh, I love it felt like paradise. Uh, but the winds of change, they blew us apart. My first love, you always hold a special place in my heart. The memories of us, they still remain. A love that's pure with no hint of disdain. Uh, you taught me how to love, how to feel. My first love, your memories will always be real. Uh. Hey. I'm over here talking, you hear me? Like I'm really putting my heart out of, out here. Chat GPT pouring my heart out for me. Okay. Okay. I love it was a whirlwind of romance. A love that was pure with no hint of chance. Hey. 
Okay, chat GPT. So it's obvious, guys, that this works. This works, right? Look at all these verses that we have to choose from. Like, I don't have to do anything but make it fit. That's all I have to do is make it fit. That's it. So this works. This is probably the least amount of work you have to do is placing it on there, making it sound good. Now you don't have to worry about what to say. It's about how you say it, which is the key to anything, right? Now it takes the, the first half pressure off of you because writer, writer's block is a real thing, all right? So yeah, guys, this is uh, this is it. This is how you get it. See you on the next gone all right guys back to it so um pretty much you know we're pretty much at the end of the process of making a uh complete song so we got our body right peep this out we got all these verses we can just we can take about three of them and maybe take one of another one and just complete it you know because Normally, a verse could be, and, and this is the thing, normally a verse could be 12 bars, right? Uh, a normal verse is anywhere from 8 to 16 bars. Bars meaning lines, right? So technically, even though I was trying to get ChatGPT to write me 16 line verses, a lot of times verses are 12 bars. So, but if it was a 12, a 16 bar verse, I could easily use 12 of one verse and then just take four lines from another one to complete my 16. If I wanted to just go off of what chat GPT provided, uh, that, that's the easy way to do it. Right. So that's one way to do it. Um, but let's just say if it's 12, then, hey, I'm good to go. Or if it's eight, I just take away four, you know. Um, but anyway, we got our body. Right. We have the body of our essay. And at the end of the essay, what do we have? We have the summary, the conclusion, right? Concluding what our essay is about. So in song format, um, pretty much that is very similar to uh, you just, you know, a lot of songs at the end of the verse, you hear some people talking or, you know, just creating other types of melodies and, you know, maybe creative or, you know, doing some type of branding, whether saying their name or saying their uh, label name or, you know, their brand name, anything of that nature. So uh, songs don't really have conclusions, but those would be really the conclusions. Or, you know, they may just be talking and kind of just talking about the song, Who you know, so there's no right or wrong for a conclusion on a song, but that is a way to close it out. But yeah, guys, this is pretty much, you know, how you will go about it as far as using chat GPT to make a song. So you've seen this entire process, like this is as easy as one, two, three. This is like, this is super simple, super easy. Um, so guys, you know, just 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 get to it. You know, just make it happen. All right, just make it happen, guys. No reason why you can't. All right. Till then, see you on the next. What up? Back to it. All right, guys. So, um, so you know. We have an understanding on how to use ChatGPT to create a song, All right? Now, I want to kind of get in get in depth on you know a couple other things, right? So, of course, like a song, um, you know, it shows you how to you you know how to create very great songs, uh, you know, simple, basic, every line rhymes, everything, right? Now, I know I have some people that. Okay, how can you use it to write more complex things, right? Because when it when it comes to creating songs, of course you want to create a song. It's it's not all about what you say; it's about how you say it when you're in song mode. Because the goal of a song is to, for it to be catchy, right? But 
there are times to where your verses inside your songs, you know, we want to say things that will make people be like, whoa, or what? Or hold on, did he just say that? Or did she just say that? Or oh, I got to rewind this, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, let's let's you know let's let's get with chat gpt and see if we can come up with some more complex lines right some some metaphors similes punch lines things of that nature all right so write me a 16 line verse even though it's not gonna be 16 write me a 16 line verse for a song, well, verse with metaphors. Metaphors. Hmm. All right, so in the darkest of nights, my heart was a stone, heavy and cold with no warmth to be shown. But then you came along a ray of light. Now, before I finish this, I want you guys to understand something very important. So a lot of times what chat GPT does is it goes off of prior information. So if we notice all I asked it was to do is create me a 16 line verse. And it did it created me 16 lines. Wow. Uh, create me a 16 line verse with metaphors. I didn't give it a topic. It's talking about love. Why? Because we've been talking about love the entire time. All right. So now, of course, you can always ask it to be specific, but okay, well, how can I get it to not even go off a topic? Well, what we would do is we could clear the conversation and just refresh it, all right, to where it has no recollection of any conversations and it'll kind of just go off of the wind. But this is cool though. All right, the darkest of nights, my heart was, was a stone heavy and cold with no warmth to be shown. But then you came along a ray of light breaking through my darkness, shining bright. You were the fire that melted my heart of ice, a shooting star that brought me hope and spice, a wild flower that bloomed in my borrowed soul, a symphony that played the melody of my role. Your love was a compass that guided me through, a rainbow that painted my heart anew my world anew, a beacon of hope in my sea of despair, my soul made a dream that became so fair. In my arms, I found a sanctuary, a place of peace and sweet sinity, sinity, <laughs> sinernary. I'm sorry, guys. You were the missing piece that made me whole. My heart, my soul, you were my ultimate goal. That's cold, I ain't gonna lie. That's pretty nice. That was pretty nice. Okay. Okay, Chat GPT. Okay. 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 <laughs> now let's clear this. I want to clear the uh everything. I wanted to do it again. So write me a 16 line verse with metaphors. Can't spell. Now let's see what it do. Okay. The sun danced in the sky, a fairy ball of gold. As the breeze whispered secrets that it held, that it had long held. The trees swayed like graceful dances in a show, and the river flowed like a silver ribbon below. The moon glowed like a pearl in the inky blackness as the stars twinkled like diamonds in the sea of darkness. The city buzzed like a hive of busy bees and the traffic roared like an angry sea. The mountains stood like giants guarding the land 
and the clouds drifted like a lazy sheep on a strand. The flowers bloomed like a symphony of colors and the rain held like tears of joy from the heavens above. The world was alive with a symphony of sounds and nature's beauty was everywhere to be found. For in this great despair, the space, the, in this great to space tree of life, each thing had a role, a vital part to play in the grand scheme of the whole. That's nice. Now, I did have some similes because we know similes is using the word like or as. So it did have similes in it, even though we asked it to do metaphors. But more importantly, it, it had wordplay, it had punchlines. So, you know, this just shows you how more in depth you can get with chat GPT, you know, instead of just saying verse, you can say what kind of verse, you know what I'm saying? Let's see, let's, I'm going to ask this something I've never asked it to do. Write me a 16 line verse with double syllables. Rhyming at the end of each line. Hmm. Nah, I can't do it. Let me let me ask it again. Write me a 16 bar verse with double syllables. The light, calm, breeze, ease. Okay, so I feel like it could potentially do it. Uh, we'll probably just kind of have to play around a little bit more. But you see, I was trying to get it to uh, write a 16 bar verse with double syllable line, like the each line at the each word at the end be a double syllable rhyming. So I was trying to see how in depth. I'm sure it can do it, but we got it. I never asked it to do that. So I'm, I'm kind of doing this with y'all in real time. But as we can see, it could easily write a verse with metaphors and similes. We know that. All right. So we just got to kind of ask it the right question for it to do what we want. But guys, this is it. Like this is easy. You can write a thousand songs easy. Right. Thousand songs easy. So. All right, guys. To then see you on the next. Gone. All right, guys, what's up? It's your boy, Nar Too Hard. And today we are going to be talking about how to utilize chat GPT for the music business. All right. How can you utilize chat GPT to take over the music industry? Like it sounds cliche, right? But guys, chat GPT is a platform like no other. There's so many things that you can do with ChatGPT, and we're going to talk about all of it. All right. So when it comes to the music industry, it's never really been no step-by-step uh, -step, uh, solution. You know, there's no uh, school for the music industry. Well, until we created it, right? <laughs> um, and we'll talk about that later on. But, you know, there's no technically there's no official accredited school that shows you step by step how to be successful in the music industry. Right. Like, you know, there are blueprints and documents that shows you step by step on how to build a McDonald's, a subway. Um, how to start your own lawn care business, right? How to start your own car wash business, but there's no blueprint for the music industry. Well, what if there was? 
Or what if there is now? What if ChatGPT opened the gateway for exactly that? Well, I'm not going to say it has, but uh, I'm going to show you how to maneuver and make it make you and make it put you in a position that has seemed unreal until now. All right. So chat GPT, we're going to use chat GPT uh, throughout this uh, journey of ours. And I know it too hard. Uh, which is a veteran in this music industry. I, I've been in this music industry going on 19 years. Um, actually going on 20 years. Wow. I'll be 34 soon. And uh, yeah, I've be, uh, been at this thing since 14. So I've been in this game for a long time, guys. And uh, now the times that we are living in is outrageous. All right. And I'm going to show you uh, exactly what I mean. So for artists, it's always been tough to navigate your, your way through this music industry. Like, what do you do? Like, how do you approach it? Like, what's step one? What's step two? Right. So we're going to use ChatGPT to help us define what step one is. What is step two? Right. So. Let's just ask it a basic question. How can a artist become successful in the music industry? Step by step. So we're just starting with a general question, right? General question. Okay. Becoming successful in the music industry as an artist is a multi-step process that, require, that requires talent, hard work, dedication, and persistence. All right, so step one is develop your skills. As an artist, it is important to focus on developing your skills as a musician. It involves practicing regularly, taking music lessons or attending workshops, experimenting with different styles and genres, right? So as an artist, whether you're a rapper, a singer, um, you know, you have to work at the craft. So that's 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 self-explanatory. We know that, right? You got to do that. OK, so. Whenever I talk about an artist, I always compare artists to a business because essentially that's what an artist is, right? A artist is a business. The artist is the business, right? So comparing this to a business form, basically when it says develop your skills, it's telling you to develop your product, right? develop your product well you're not developing your product right off the bat but it's preparing you to you know sharpen your iron right sharpen your skills because when it's time to develop the product you have to be able to develop the product at a high quality right you got to be able to develop at a high quality so comparing it to a cell phone carrier right so let's just say I'm Verizon and I'm skilled at creating this phone. I'm very skilled at creating this phone, but I wasn't always like that, right? I had to practice first. I had to put in the work, you know, sharpen my skills, right? So that's basically what's telling you, right? So before anything, you got to be able to have that skill, all right? Step two, build the brand, right? So it doesn't matter if you're an artist or you own a restaurant, you have to build your brand. So if my restaurant was called JR Chicken, 
right? I got to start building it, right? I got to start building the brand, okay? Before I even build the building, I got to build the brand. I got to build the logo, right? I got to create a social media presence, an offline presence, right? Create flyers and, you know, create social media pages. Like, you have to know who I am. You know, who is this person, right? So as an artist, if my artist name is um, I am, I am the rapper. Well, I am the rapper. You have to know who I am. I have to have my logo. I have to have my social media presence. I have to have my offline presence. Like when you see me, you know who I am. I am the rapper. You know who I am. Before I create any type of product, you know who I am. That's building a brand. All right. So after you do that, you got to network. Right. And when I say after after you do that, you're going to forever be building your brand. Right. But while you're doing that and after you're doing that, you got to network. Right. You got to network in the music industry. So what does that look like? Attend music events, connect with other artists. Right. So it's so, so important to go to workshops, go to seminars, go to conferences. All right. This is when you're going to meet the movers and the shakers in the music industry. This is how you're able to uh, politic, right? Shake hands, kiss babies as the president does. Well, it's the same thing. This is how you get around these people in real life, right? These people that, you know, you can network with the decision makers in the game. And then also other people that do the same thing as you do. This is how collaborations happen, right? So networking is key. All right. So while you're doing this, and this isn't like, the the like the perfect like step by step order all right this is isn't like the proper proper order how you go about it this is a order that you can follow this is a order all right but basically the goal is we're really showing you the power of chat gpt right so boom create high quality music so this is when your product creation starts technically if we're going off of this lineup all right create high quality music so as an artist this is your product all right you're building your business you're building your brand i am the rapper now i am the rapper has to start creating products because it's time to start generating capital start generating sales through selling my product and my services all right so i gotta create, use my skills and create my high quality product. I got to get in that studio and create my product, right? Boom. I got my high quality product. The next thing I have to do is I have to release the music. So I have to take that high quality product and I have to put it in stores, right? So as a cell phone carrier, I will be putting it in, of course, the online stores, the online market, and then I'm going to be putting it in Walmart, Target, right? All the cell phone shops. So it is available for potential clients to go buy. So as a musician, I'm going to make sure that my music is where? On iTunes, on Apple Music, on Spotify, on Audio Mac, right? It's going to be on Amazon Music and Point Dora. Uh, YouTube music, etc. These are where people are going to be able to buy my product. Right? Next, perform live. I have to showcase my product to the world. Right? Because not everybody is going to be in the, on these online stores. Right? Not everybody is going to be on these online stores. So I have to go, you know, I have to go and perform my product, I have to go showcase my product, right? Like a trade show, like I'm, I'm, I'm marketing my product in a live performance, uh, a live performance way. So I go to local venues, I go to, you know, try to pay to, you know, go to uh, shows and open up for different famous artists and festivals, you name it. I'm performing the song, performing you know, performing, doing live performances so they can witness the product in a different way. And then if they like it and they really like it, guess what? They're going to go try to buy the product at the locations that the product is located. 
right? And what happens while I'm doing all of this? Well, I'm building my fan base because when I'm my music is in the stores, all right, I'm pushing the product on social media and through advertisement, live performances and all that stuff. I'm building a fan base. And next, I'm staying committed because all of these things, I have to do it again and keep doing it and doing it. And the more I repeat this process, guess what? A star is born at the end. All right. So I wanted to do this because, guys, I wanted to show you the power of chat GPT. This is just the beginning. We're just getting our feet wet. I just wanted to see like how one question you asking it one question, it can just turn into something such bigger. All right. So, guys, you know what it is. All right. See you on the next one. Gone. All right, guys, we're back at it. All right, so like we said, this is the Chat GPT for music business. How to utilize Chat GPT to blaze through the music industry, right? So we're going to be showing y'all some amazing things. Like, I'm super excited, super excited to show you guys this, this amazing, amazing tool and how you can utilize it to blaze through the music industry. Like, Everything that you need to know and need to do, you can utilize ChatGPT to do it. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's providing you with information, providing you with contacts, providing you with step-by-step -step information, like it can do it all. It's all about how you talk to it, right? All right, so without further ado, let's get it. So let's start with the basics, like the foundations of an artist, like, what is the foundation, right? So let's let's kind of start with it. So chat GPT. Create me a step by step roll out marking plan. Eight week rollout plan for a music artist. Watch this. So, as you see, it's generating us step by step on what to do by week, right? So this is just one strategy that you can use. This is just one strategy. And this is how labels and, you know, agencies, this is how they launch artists. Is they, it's a rollout plan, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you ever notice, like when an artist release a, a record like they're doing a whole bunch of different things these things are planned and they're planned out in a weekly basis right now this is just a fundamental plan but this is a plan you know what i'm saying so week one it's telling you off the rip you got to define your audience so by this time you really should already kind of know your audience but it's telling you off the rip does you know determine your audience you know what I'm saying? Like, who is your listeners? You know what I'm saying? Press release. You know what I'm saying? It's telling you week one, go ahead and get your press release together so you can start pitching it to blogs and magazines. Right? Develop your, your social media strategy. Week two, release a single. You know what I'm saying? Like, week two, you release the single. Week two, they telling you to plan live performances. Contact influencers. Start putting the plan together. Week three, release the music video. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's giving you the whole rundown on what to do. Like, it's crazy, right? Like, week four, collab collaborate with other artists. You know what I'm saying? Get them features in. Week four, start creating the behind-the-scenes content. You know what I'm saying? Whether well, studio sessions, photo shoots, interviews, plan a promotional event listening party meet and greets like 
It's giving you the whole rundown. Release another single week five. You know what I'm saying? Week six, week six plan a merchandise release. Create a, mer a promotional tour. Listen, host a listening party. Week seven, release your full project. You know what I'm saying? Plan a social media takeover. Thank your fans. Week eight, analyze your results. Like, it's giving you a whole structure rollout. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to give you an example on how to get more in depth. Because, right, it's all about what you ask. So let's start with week one and the first thing they tell you. Define your target audience. Okay. Well, how do you do that? Give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to, as a, for a music artist, So now we're getting in depth on the first question. Define your genre. Identify the genre of your music. Research demographics. Analyze your current fan base. Identify psycho psychographic characteristics. Create buyer persona. Conduct surveys and focus groups. Monitor your composition, your competition. Refine your strategy. So a lot of these things is like, it's a lot of technical, tech, you know, real technical, but this is really what it is. And a lot of, a lot of times, some of this information might look like, like a whole bunch of like codes, you know what I'm saying? Like computer programming type stuff. But let's just say if you was to market your music on Facebook, Facebook ads, Instagram ads and stuff like that. And when you utilize the ad platform, and when you're doing your target settings, the only difference is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they already have this information installed in their system. So they're able to provide you and provide it to you in a different way. So let's say if you set up your Instagram ads and you go to the target settings and it allows you to target by interest, allows you to target by demographic. And all you got to do is just choose like, OK, I want an artist to uh, target people that like music well how are they able to do that because when you create a facebook account an instagram account you have to provide them with certain information when you're on instagram and you're liking certain things and doing certain activities they're monitoring your activity so when it says conduct surveys and focus groups they are that's what they're doing this is what these social media platforms are doing they're doing all of these things so they're providing this information to advertisers because advertisers are paying social media bills. Social media platforms generate 90% of their revenue from advertising. Advertisers, which are brands, businesses, and artists. You know what I'm saying? So, but this is how you would identify your target audience. You know what I'm saying? Research demographics, analyze your current fan base. Like, the people that you, if you have a current fan base, who are your fans? Like, who is your, not your friends and family? I'm talking about people that don't know you. Who are your current fans? You know what I'm saying? What do they live? What do they look like? How old are they? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are the, some other things they like? Do they like bike riding? Do they like going to the club? Do they like concerts? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the type of information that if you was doing this without social media, you, you would, you would need to like gather this type of information. Like, you the the ultimate thing is to create your website and when you create your website you have people that you know what i'm saying they 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 put in their information you know what i'm saying like you create your website and then okay how can you get them to like tap into your website like why would they tap into your website versus just following you on social media oh well you're going to get exclusive information from this website so i need your email your phone number you know what I'm saying? You can get more in depth. How old are you? Where you live? You know what I'm saying? Like you can get more in depth if you want to. 
Um, or if you have a, a high tech website that'll collect that info on the back end, like a social media platform. But this is how you get started, y'all. Like you ask it questions. You ask, you tell it what you want. You know what I'm saying? How to, then okay, create your press release. How do I create a press release? You know what I'm saying? It gives you like a quick answer, but hey, give me step by step on how I create the press release. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 like it's super in depth on that level, y'all. So yeah, like y'all can do the same thing I just did. Ask it that question. You know what I'm saying? You can ask it to create you a 12 month rollout plan. You know what I'm saying? Like it can get get in depth. You know, how do you create a social media contest? Like you can ask it all these questions and it's gonna do exactly that, y'all. So hey, that's 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 it on this one, y'all. Tap in. We got so much more. It don't end here. All right, guys, let's get to it. All right, so now next, I want to get into some uh some you know tactical things, um before we kind of get into the rest of the you know your journey. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure your paperwork right. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure your paperwork right. And most of the time, whenever you're doing your paperwork, you need a lawyer. You need a music lawyer. Or artist manager that specializes in contracts and things of that nature, you want to make sure you ain't getting, you know, messed over. You know what I'm saying? Or if you a label owner, an artist manager, producer, like whoever you are in the music industry, you gotta make sure your paperwork right. So guess what? I'm about to give you the whole drip. All right, so peep this out. I'm going to show you a basic contract. Um, we're going we gonna to have chat GPT create us contracts to protect us. All right. Create. I'm going to ask chat GPT create a <clears throat> contract agreement between a artist and a producer with the artist having a exclusive rights to the producer's instrumental all right so peak this so all you got to do is plug and play all you got to do is plug in you know what i'm saying it's creating you the whole contract whole contract to make sure you straight so if you get you if you're an artist and you get an exclusive you know what i'm saying you get an exclusive beat from a uh from a producer hey we got the whole contract laid out laid out so where not only the artist but the producer is protected as well you know what i'm saying all you gotta do is plug in your name and the dates and the, and the, and the addresses and stuff they got the whole contract all right, what about a songwriter? Create a split sheet. Split sheet contract. Between a songwriter and a Another songwriter. What if you a songwriter collabing with a songwriter? Boom. You know how it be you know how it be sometimes you a songwriter or you an artist and you just collabing with another artist, y'all just chilling, but a lot of times, you know, y'all vibing and y'all don't have the paperwork. You know what I'm saying? And then 
that song will blow up and then boom, you know, everybody mad because, you know, the bread ain't getting broke down properly. So now all you got to do is take 30 seconds, chat GPT, create, create us a split sheet real quick so we can get back to our vibe. It's going to boom, create it real quick and y'all good. All you got to do is plug and play. All you got to do is plug in a little percentages that y'all agreed on. You know what I'm saying? Create. What if you are what if you a label and you trying to sign an artist and you an artist manager and you trying to sign an artist? Create a contract between a artist manager and the artist. artist management contract you know what i'm saying just like that like you can create any type of contracts that you need to protect yourself it's all about protection like this music industry is cool but we gotta make sure that we protect it y'all and this how you do it you ain't gotta hire no lawyer now of course don't get me wrong you sitting in front of a label and they put that contract on the on the table you, you know, you're going to have to get somebody to read it. But as far as creating your own contracts, like, this is how you do it, y'all. Make sure you protect it. You know what I'm saying? This is how you do it. Create a 360 deal contract between a label record label and a artist this whole this whole this a whole con 360 deal y'all now i ain't gonna lie i never seen a 360 deal i just wanted to see what it looked like you know what i'm saying this a whole 360 deal this is what they be talking about This a whole 360 deal, y'all. But more of the story, this is how you get down, y'all. Like, you make sure you protect it. You can exit anything. Any type of contract you need, you make sure you get it because ChatGPT can get it. All right? And get it done within seconds. All right? That's where we at. That's where we on. All right, y'all. We ain't done. I'll see you on the next. All right, guys. So now we're about to take it to the next level. So when it comes to the music business, I would say the hardest part for artists, anybody in the music industry is getting over the marketing hump. Like mastering the art of marketing because that is what separates a artist a producer from fame money that's 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 what's in between the artists or the producers you know what i'm saying like that's what's in a way because we got the artist the, the producer we got their talent and then on the other end we have the money and the fame right but what's stopping them from reaching their goals it's the marketing right but how can we master like how do we market like what do we do a lot of people don't even, they just don't know what to do well let's fix that problem guys let's fix that problem all right so without further ado let's get it so marketing let's ask chat gpt right create me a marketing a step by step marketing plan for Instagram and TikTok. We're going to just start here.
All right, so I know it's going to, you know, probably hit us with some basic information, all right? But some relevant information. Okay, so it's actually giving us the whole game. Yeah, it's actually giving us the whole game. Okay. Okay. Surprisingly, in the first try, they gave us pretty in-depth. So, in general, this is like the basics of it, right? But this is everything. All right, but we're going to get more in depth. So we asked it to create us a music marketing plan for Instagram and TikTok. Week one says set up your Instagram accounts, establish a brand. We know that, right? Create engaging and con engaging content. So a lot of times this might fly over your head, but content is king. Content is everything. You have to create engaging content and you have to post the content regularly. You know what I'm saying? It tells you research and create a content calendar. Like this is serious. You got to do that. You know what I'm saying? If you like, if you serious with taking it to that next level, you got to do this, right? All right. Next step. Hashtags. You got to post hashtags. It's telling you popular hashtags, music related, new music Friday, song of the day. Why? Because if you ever notice, most new music is dropped on Fridays. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of giving you hashtags to use off the rip, right? Collaborations and influencers. Influencers is everything, right? So outside of everything they just said, this is like the basics of, you know, it's like, it's really like four major ways to grow on Instagram and TikTok, like social media period, right? But for Instagram and TikTok, it's four major ways to grow. So the first way is everything they just said, create the account, create engaging content, hashtags. And then, of course, the foundational things, posting, you know, what I'm saying engaging with other people, liking, uh, liking other people's content, commenting, DMing, you know, what I'm saying hopping on people's stories like that type of engagement helps you grow. So that's the basics. Right. And then, of course, following people and all that stuff. The next major way is collaborations and influencers, right? So collaborating with other people, whether you're going live, going live with other people, tapping in with influencers, you know what I'm saying? Getting shout outs from influencers and stuff like that. Like influ like TikTok, they got the duet feature, you know what I'm saying? Doing the duets on TikTok, but collaborating with influencers, whether it's Instagram or TikTok, that's the second major way. The third major way is doing contests and giveaways. How many times have you seen influencers do these little contests with agencies where they giving away laptops and all that stuff like phones and they saying, hey, you got to follow this person and this. So that's kind of like the giveaway aspect. And then you got the contests. So the contests where they doing like dance contests where they doing like, hey, uh, I want you. They do a contest where they want everybody to rap on this instrumental Whoever do the best, you know what I'm saying? You get like a prize, like stuff like that. You got the the uh the built-in features like the polls, the quizzes, the questions, the increased engagement. And the last final way is ads. If you notice, you can do anything you want to do on social media, you know what I'm saying? But if you want to reach the masses, you have to pay. You when you post, you can only reach a certain amount of people, but when you pay, you can reach the masses. So ads. So those are the four major ways to grow. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you want to analyze your analytics and all that stuff. So and then it says cross promotion. So okay, boom. Well, let's get a little bit more in depth, right? Let's get more in depth. So I'm a, I'm gonna use TikTok as an example. All right. So I'm a, I'm gonna give you an example. So let's start with let's see let's do hashtags all right create me a list of the best hashtags to use for a music artist for TikTok. Boom. So instead of us doing all that work, trying to research, 
the best hashtags. You know what I'm saying? You taking all up that time. We just, hey, chat GPT, do the work for us. So they just generated us a whole bunch of hashtags. Right? Whole bunch of hashtags. All right. What else? Let's go to the next one. Uh, it said influencers. Okay. Uh, create me a list of 20, let's say 30 influencers on TikTok that are known to promote I'm going to say independent. I'm going to stretch it and see if they independent artists music. All right, it says an error. So whenever it does that, you just need to refresh the page. So we're going to refresh, refresh the page. It does that sometimes, though, so don't be alarmed. I'm going to ask the same question. So, peep this. Peep this. So, we just asked it to generate us 30 influencers on TikTok that are known to promote independent music artists. And it's giving us just that. And it's giving us a little backstory. This influencer regularly promotes independent music and emerging artists on his TikTok account. This influencer is dedicated to promoting independent music and new artists. This TikTok, this is wild. Like, this is like in-depth information, y'all. This is super in-depth. Like, this is, yeah. It stopped at 28, but we can just ask it to do it again. So it ain't nothing. But just the fact that it was able to do that, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's amazing. So it really just shows you, like, the power. You know what I'm saying? Like, the power of just asking ChatGPT to just do the work for you. You know what I'm saying? Like... Give me a step by step guide on how to run my own TikTok ads. Now, it's probably not going to get technical, but it's going to give you, you know, because TikTok ads something a little deep. Like, you really got to, you know, but it give you like the basics. But, you know, running ads, that's the next step that you want to do. So it's kind of giving you the best way to run your ads, kind of in the technical list form. But it's at least it's doing that. Give me a step-by-step -step format on creating a contest giveaway for my social media promotional rollout for a music artist so it's giving you the step by step like Okay, how do I do my contest? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of giving you the format on how to do it. So, now you just got to think about, okay, what type of contest do I want to do? And this is how you do it. Just follow this format. So, guys, this is how you, like, this is, like, a cool key strategy on, like, how to develop a strategized marketing plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is how you do it, y'all. So, that's where we at.
I'll see you on the next. All right, y'all, we back at it. <clears throat> All right, so, you know, we kind of tapped into, like, how to develop a high tactical marketing strategy with ChatGPT, right? So now let's kind of get into the musical side because we was mainly talking about, you know, social media, use, utilizing social media to market your music, right? Now I'm going to show you how to use it to help you with marketing your music on actual music platforms, right? All right, so let's tap into Spotify. Let's, so let's do Spotify, right? So when it comes to Spotify, you got two ways to grow, right? You got Spotify playlists, and then, of course, you got running advertisement, whether it's Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and sending them to your Spotify uh, song, right? So... I'm going to kind of show you as far as like playlists, right? So how do you get your music on Spotify playlists? Let's ask. How? Well, first, give me the step-by-step -step blueprint on how to get my music on Spotify playlist. Give me the step-by-step -step blueprint on how to get my music on Spotify playlist. All right, so it's kind of, it's gonna kind of give us like, you know, the foundational, right? Which is that's what we need. So this is the foundational way, right? Okay, cool. Optimize your artist profile, create a pitchy, worthy track, identify relevant playlists, find a playlist, curate a contact information, right? So this might be available on the playlist description or through a Google search. So a lot of times they are available on the playlist description, which is, I'm going to show you, that's what we're going to tap in. Send a personalized pitch. Follow up, right? All right. Provide me with a list of 50 Spotify playlist curators that are known to promote independent artists music. All right, so I like this, right? So what it says is, I don't have access to specific information regarding Spotify playlist curators. However, I can suggest some tips on how to find relevant curators for independent music artists, independent artist music. Okay, so it's giving us, okay, boom. So it's saying I can't provide you with that, but use third-party tools like Submit Hub, Playlist Push, and Indie Muno to submit your music directly to Spotify curators. All right, so that's something that we was going to talk about. Submit Hub is a platform to where you can go. It's a website where you can go to and you sign up and you're able to link directly with uh, curators, right? But I'm going to ask it again, okay? Create me a list of Spotify list of Spotify playlists that are known to promote 
independent artist music of 50 with their Spotify channel link and that are known to promote let's see what this do all right i'm gonna ask you again y'all we doing this in real time we doing this in real time so peep this Create me a list of 50 Spotify playlists with their Spotify channel link that promote promote music boom alright so it's all about how you ask it to them so now it's obvious that they can't provide us with the actual playlist curators information, but a lot of these playlists do have contact information on their channel. So this is still a great tool. Now I could have got Pacific as far as genres, but this just shows us that they can provide us with playlists in their channel that are known to promote music. So this is a way that if you want to like, utilize chat gpt to create playlists you know what i'm saying like find the playlist and you reach out to them yourself or like i said you can go to submit hub you can go to indie muno you can go to you know what i'm saying like you can go to those platforms those are marketplace platforms to where you can connect directly with curators so that's for spotify let's let's ask it uh for youtube create me a list of YouTube channels that promotes independent music, independent artists, music with their channel links. Create me a list of spot YouTube channels that promote. Boom. So now this works because when you click on a YouTube channel and you go to their about me, they always have their business email and about me. So this is the best way to reach out to these type of companies. But boom, we just created a whole influencer list for YouTube. That yeah, boom, all right, we can pitch our music to. And then some of them gonna hit you back, like, hey, we charge this, we charge that, but we already know it take money to make money. It take money to get your money, get your music exposed. But the fact of the matter is, Chat GPT is able to do the work for you so you can make these moves. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, I asked it for 50, it did 38. That's cool. All we gotta do is just do another search. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. We got a whole list in the palm of our hands within seconds, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's what we on. And we not done. I see you on the neck. All right, y'all. We back at it. All right, so now we tapped in with the marketing aspect as far as the first half. We got the internet buzzing. We got the social media going up. We got the musical platforms going up, right? But now we got to tap into the second half. We got to tap in with the radio, with the DJs, you know what I'm saying? So let's get it. So we're going to have chat GPT tap us in with the radios. Like how we get our music on the radios? First off, give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to get my music on radio stations okay. 
So, all right, they're giving us the platform, you know what I'm saying, the foundational aspect as far as how to do it. Because before we get our music on radio, we got to know how to do it. Like, what do we need to provide the radio stations? Like, it's certain formats that your music got to be in, right? So, boom. You know what I'm saying? So, now, create me a list of radio stations that play independent artist music all right we're gonna ask it again create a list of radio stations that play music Create me a list of radio stations with their contact information that plays music. I'm going to ask you again. Create me a list of radio stations with their website information of 50 radio stations. Boom. Here we go. And you already know the websites. They always got the little, little contact section. So I just, I didn't get genre based. You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure if we get genre based, you know, I'm, I'm hip hop guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say, I'm going to always do the hip hop thing. You know what I'm saying? That's how we rocking. Oh, they still creating a little list. All right, so now I broke it down. Now it's breaking it down by genre. So now I, I got the whole, I got the whole look, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, boom, I'm trying to go on a radio run. Man, where the hip hop stations at? All right, boom, 50. All right, I'm going to contact 50, probably 30 hit me back. They hit me back with the numbers. I, I go with the ones that I can afford and I run it through. Run me the little radio campaign. That's how you do it, y'all. I'm glad that we doing it live, y'all, because I want y'all to see like the trial and error as far as like what you can ask chat GPT, what it can't do, but how can you twist the words to still get the information that you want? You know what I'm saying? So they just created me a whole list or radio stations. Then they created me a whole list of hip hop radio stations. You know what I'm saying? So you can get super in depth. It's all about what you ask them, y'all. All right. What else? You know what I'm saying? What if they what if they got their email? What if they ain't got the phone number but they got the email information? Create me a email template for contacting radio stations about playing my 
artist music on their station. So boom, now it's like, all right, you got that information and it's the same thing you can do with the playlist. Cause now you got that information. What do you say to them? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I approach them professionally? Boom. Now you got a whole template. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's up and it's stuck y'all. And we got more to go. I see you on the net. All right, we back at it y'all. So, so pretty much man, like we got the streets going crazy, right? Like we got the, the internet going up, right? We got the radio going up, DJs playing the music, right? So now what's the next step? Well, it's time to make a da -da 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 -da. you guessed it. <laughs> hey, it's time to make the last move. We're trying to hit the street. Got to got to perform. You know what I'm saying? Got to do the shows and all that stuff. So, you know, normally this is the sign. This is the part where, you know, you're trying to tap into a label and they try to, you know, sign you and all that or if you're an independent artist, you're doing it on your own. You know what I'm saying? So you got to hit the streets. You got to get, the, you know, do the uh, political thing. You know what I'm saying? Like the president, shake hands, kiss, baby game. Well, you got to get get out here in these streets and politic, man. You got to do the, you know, the meet and greets, you know, do the shows and, you know, promo shows and stuff. Get out here and, you know, they heard you on, on the radio, on the internet, but now they need to see you and, you know, watch you perform live and catch that connection with you so you know how do you how do you set up your own tour well we already know what to do give me a step by step guide on how to set up my own music tour for a music artist so you know this is like the foundational aspect of how to do it y'all you know what I'm saying like this is like now with this one, you're gonna have to put the groundwork in, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna have to put the groundwork in. It's, it's giving you the foundational aspect, but you gotta put the work in. Plan and research, right? Determine where you want the tour, research the venues and cities that made a good fit for your artists. You know what I'm saying? Consider the travel costs, logging, equipment rental. Like, chat GPT can't really do that for you. You're gonna have to really like, you know what I'm saying? Like some of this stuff it really can't do for you. But it did lay out the foundational aspect for you. You know what I'm saying? But contact venues. Like once you get a list of potential venues. Now, like I said, we doing this live. So, you know, let, let, let's see now. I, I don't think ChatGPT can do it, but I'm curious. Give me a list of venues that allow independent music artists to perform give me a list of venues that allow Oh, shoot. Oh, okay, so it's giving us like foundationals, right? Giving us the foundationals. Okay, okay. So let's get Pacific. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's see. Give me a list of venues in Atlanta, Georgia, 
that allow music artists performances okay so boom there you go y'all look right when i doubt right when i doubt chat gpt they shut me down you know what i'm saying like they did do it now this is how i know this is real because i i'm i know atlanta i'm familiar with atlanta so all these platforms these are actually platforms where they this is real like you know you can really like perform here like i done, i'd have been through shows through these platforms some of them so this is real so they're providing you with like real up-to-date information so all you got to do is take this information you know what i'm saying uh, okay you already know i'm gonna go the extra route like is it gonna give us the contact information with their contact info <laughs> let's see i doubt it though what hey we plugged in y'all we plugged in so it's like it's all about what you ask so they providing us with the venue information so this is like this is up this is up you know what i'm saying so it's all about the question so boom that's probably like the hardest part of the tour like okay if we trying to tour in atlanta all right, what's the venues? All right, boom, just gave us the list and the phone numbers. Boom, we just hitting them. Out of 10, we're going to get a percentage of them that's going to allow it to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, and then we could probably get in depth. Like we said, venues. So, the, the, you know, it gave us a list of venues that allow independent performances. We can be like, give us a list of music festivals, list of nightclubs, list of coffee houses you know what i'm saying like we could probably get in depth but this is great you know what i'm saying so yeah y'all this is how you set up your own tour you know you know coordinate the logistics promote the tour book the tour perform and evaluate like this is the game this is when you see your favorite artist setting up that that fly with all their tour dates this is what they go through you know only difference is they probably have a team you know what i'm saying but Guess what? You got a team too, cause you got Chat GPT on your side, so you got your own team too. So it's up. 